and chat. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. God, the Cyber's World is a jam. I'm sorry the uh, stream lead didn't took as long as it did. Um, I was just listening to that so good. Um, oh, look, I gotta put on my uh, double set of headphones. Hang on. Damn weird setup I have. Uh, anyways, uh, let me bring on the crew. Hello. Hello, hello. hello. How's it going? Uh, I'm all right. Minda's just uh, tending to his cat. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so, yeah, my character outfit is pretty weird. I was leveling Rogue. Last time I logged in. Well, not last time I logged in. I was, uh, I've logged in since then for, uh, Cactpot. But, um, excuse me. The last time we did, uh, off-stream leveling was a couple days ago, and we were doing Rogue. We're gonna level Rogue up to 30, then do class quests, then unlock Ninja. Uh, and then proceed. Today, uh, we're doing... The rest of the Moogle Beast Tribe unlock quests. Uh, then we're doing some class quests. We're going to do Scholar 60. We're going to do uh, Machinist up to 50. And we're going to do Dark Knight up to 60. And uh, that'll probably cover the whole stream. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. And I'm back. Hello. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. What's that? Just cacked pot. Oh, hey, there's Minda. Uh, all right, let's go for one, two, three. Oh, there was a seven, eight, nine. God damn it. Yeah, it always sucks when that happens. I think I've told you this story before, but there was one day where all three of my tickets had a seven, eight, nine, and I missed every single one because I went for a one, two, three. And Oof. didn't get any of them. I've had that happen to me. Yeah. Hey, St. Ferrum, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Let's see, agenda for today. Um, we're unlocking Moogles. Uh, Moogle Beast Tribe quests. Hey, there's a one, two, three. We're unlocking Moogle Beast Tribe quests, and then we are um, doing some class quests. Check Discord. Uh... That's my housemate. Hang on. No fucking way. Uh, sorry. Uh, my housemate is at a magic tournament, and he just sent me a picture of a childhood friend of ours that he's uh, facing off with. Huh. Tell him I said hi. I'm confused. I forgot him. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so cool! Oh, uh, hang on, I'm gonna tell him to say hi. Say hi for me. Uh, oh, what is this? Shark Sucker Class Insubmersible. Warning, do not immerse. <laughs> oh, it's a minion, okay. Thank you. This is a very tall Rogadin. IGU's got Tengu Doll, Mud Pie, Wind Up Mithra, Mama Shiba, and Wind Up Barbarichia. Nice, thank you. I'm not sure if that's even max height for a Rogan. Might be. Yeah. Also, I saw that the uh, Final Fantasy III Scholar gave Minda white hair, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how much I'm going to... Oh, hey, there you are. Oh, you actually changed your hair color for it, huh? Yeah. Fair enough, cool. Yeah. It costs, I... like, nothing to change your hair color in this game, so... I, I don't know that I'm going to use the Scholar class very much. 
Yeah, it didn't seem to be all that useful. <laughs> it, uh, alchemy doubles, um, healing item effect, and, uh, study is just Libra. It also, it also doubles damaging, da damaging item effects. Oh, well, that too, then. But Which, uh, it's better to just attack and stuff, so... Yeah, it can be actually very, very powerful if you get your hands on, um... My inventory's uh, full? What the hell? Sorry, go on. If you get your hands on some of the later, later, later game ones, like the, the Dark Matter item, which does like, um, like three or four thousand damage unboosted, if you double that, it becomes very powerful. Fair enough. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to drop some stuff off. Oh, hey, there's enough space for the uh, minions then. I'm gonna have to drop some stuff off. Um, at my uh, retainers real quick. I guess I got a bunch of um, crafting materials when we did the uh, hunting log that filled up a bunch of my inventory space. So I'm going to take a quick detour to do that. Is there a summoning bell around here? There is. Yeah, right near the geese, right? They just gave you like the five million gil worth of minions. Really? Yeah. Damn, alright, thank you. Yeah. Somebody bell. Just to withdraw items. Uh, Once again, it's time for Lord to clean out his fucking inventory. Yeah, I've been doing that now. Oh, uh, so. how do I swap over? Ah, oh, triangle. Okay. Oh yeah, I gotta extract your materia too. You've got a bunch of those. Alright, I'm gonna clear all the uh, firmament. Nope, not that. You really don't need the wolf fang and shit like that. Uh, shoot, how do I get back? Ah, there we go. Sorry, this will take me just a sec, guys. I'm a little iffy on, like, people constantly giving you minions, because eventually you're going to start running into those minions or something. It's like, oh, I got a cool minion. Oh, wait, I have it already? Yeah, oh. yeah, I can see that. ruin the fun of, like, finding these things yourself. Take that frog back. Alright, that freed up some space. Dark Knight weapon I'm not using. 
Alright, that's weaker than my current Dark Knight weapon. So I'm gonna... Search inventory. That's an armory chest. Equip my better weapon on Rogue. Okay. Uh, Alright, so uh, we're doing Moogle stuff first. We'll turn it into a black mage. Uh, Alright, so Ishgard, right? Uh, yeah, uh, you want to come to the last vigil in Ishgard. Uh, oh, that's in Ishgard itself, okay. Go, yeah, go to the, you know, teleport, or you, your home base is probably an Ishgar, so you could probably just... Return. Oh, right, I could have just pray returned. Whoops. Yeah. And then use the, and then come to the Ethernet shard in, in Last Vigil. Oh, that's a bunch of quests. Yeah, right. uh, you, uh, specifically you want the unflinching here, into the mists. Ah, I've been looking for you, Lord. Commander Handelo, the Temple Knight, has an urgent matter he'd like to discuss with you. It would seem your strength is required once again. Pray, make your way to the Congregation of Our Knights Most Heavenly and lend an ear to his request. Okay, well, that's a big summons to help some Mughals, but alright. Okay. Congregation. Forgotten Knight is the Ether Knight we want. Thank you. Bye, Firm Albert. Bye, Firm Albert. I keep I keep buying buying earrings for my jobs and then remembering I uh I've got the uh the Menfinner's earrings which like is the best you can have up to level 80. So, um, like, oh yeah, I didn't need them. Mm -hmm. Whoops. The strength of an adventurer such as you is invaluable at a time like this. Pray, speak with Commander Handelow. Who's this? Are you a Dragoon? You are a Dragoon. The churning with, with mist. The, with, the, with the app window and everything. The churning mist. Whatever kind of place could it be? The general consensus is that they either need to get rid of the ab window on the females, or they need to give the guys an ab window. One <laughs> or the other. I would accept either. I would accept either as well. I almost <laughs> would prefer giving the guys the ab window, because oh, I think... I, I, would, I think would prefer that. <laughs> I think that would I mean, be way funnier. I mean, the best option, clearly, would be to swap it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the adventurer who felled the dreadworm Nidhogg is here at last. I have a request that requires the strength of one such as you. We wish to know the current state of the churning mists now that Nidhogg has been laid low. To that end, we have planned a reconnaissance mission that aims to gather information on the churning mists. Mayan here will be leading the mission. And I would ask that you aid her with your knowledge as well as your strength. If you wish to aid us, pray speak to her. Huh, so you're the adventurer lore I've heard so much about. Well met, friend. I am Mayan, and I'll be leading our mission into the churning mists. I know Sir Handelo has spoken to you already. Will you be lending us your assistance? That's absolutely why I'm here. "'Tis an honor to have the aid of the one who felled the mighty Nidhogg. "'As you already know, we hope to strike deep into the heart "'of what was once Nidhogg's domain. "'However, the churning mists remain an uncharted territory for us. "'I would ask that you teach us all you know of the place, "'of the beasts dwelling within, "'and any other information that could aid our mission. "'Oh, I'm going to introduce you to the Mughals, "'and it's going to be fucking hilarious.' 
I see. You have my thanks, Lord. With this information to guide us, we can plan a secure route to our destination. We shall take the airship and make anchor in for the brookery. We shall begin preparations for our departure shortly. Let us meet again at the rookery, Lord. Uh, all right, so to the Charting Mists, I guess? Uh, not yet. We're still going in town. Okay. Oh, no, we are going to the Charting Mists. Speak with Mayan at the Rookery. All right, tell Prot. Uh, Zenith is slightly closer. <laughs> I am perking this line. What? I said I'm perking this line. <laughs> you always put the line. Absolutely. That up there is Nidhogg's lair, right? The stormy um, castle thing? Uh, yeah, that's Nidhogg's lair. Uh, that was, was that the always was there? That was the oh, level yeah, the 55 area. dungeon. Yeah. The area was there from the start. I guess I haven't looked up while I've been here. Rummaging Moogle, huh? We are honored to have you with us, Lord. So this is the churning miss. Is the first time I've set foot in the Horde's stronghold. Well, turn around. You're not looking at the good view. For the safety of the Holy See, we must needs ascertain the movements of the Horde now that Nidhogg no longer guides them. Nonetheless, this place fills me with a sense of unease. It's as if someone or something is watching us. Ah, that's the Mughals. You'll get used to it. Uh, Tis best not to pay nervous fancies any mind. Lore, we shall begin our mission shortly. May it end without incident. One sec. All right, my Ed. Yep. Continue. I felt ill at ease since our arrival, as if something has been watching us. It would be best for us to remain here in case any dragons should lie in ambush, lest we alert them to our suspicions. Lore, pray investigate the area for any signs of dragons lurking in the shadows. Well, there's some right on the other side of the wall that I can kill for you real quick. <laughs> This wind sprite is definitely what we're looking for. Found the one. Aha! Uh -huh. Rookery Dire Sword.
Okay. Well, that's one of them. There's one. There's one down here. So there is. Stuck. Uh, all right, I have you. There you are. As I thought, the dragons tried to take us unawares. We used the cover of the clouds to escape the horde's wrath in the skies, but it seems the dragons here have somehow caught wind of our arrival. Nevertheless, we cannot waver now, simply because danger may lie ahead. We shall proceed with the scouting as planned. Lord, pray, ready yourself. This mission may prove to be more difficult than we anticipated. So the clouds are below us. If you came yep. up through them right in front of Nidhogg's lair, you absolutely would have been seen by the Dargans. Yeah. Lore, we have need of your aid once again. A unit of scouts has been dispatched to the northeast, and I would have you bolster their strength. I was meant to go myself, but I've received a report that a dragoon from another scouting party was wounded. I will go and assist them. I apologize the burden must fall on you, but we have no other choice. God's speed, Laura. All right, to the northeast. Yep. If you only have the one airship, how'd you get up here? I mean, they're Dragoons, so jump. That's a stretch even for a Stidian. <laughs> ah, the mighty lore has come to our aid. Mayen had sent word that she would come herself, but to have the adventurer who slew Nidhogg come is an unexpected godsend. We hope to use this area as a base for our scouting missions, but the blood dragons stalking about are making things a bit difficult. Mayhap you could help us by slaying, say, three of them? I'll try to keep up with you. Are you actually going to help, or are you just going to watch? I mean, he's going. He's going to. He's going to do the killing off screen. <laughs> ah, I think I know where they are. Blood dragons. There's one of three. There's another one down here. There's two of them down here. Excellent. And you took aggro from it before I could hit it. So yeah, this still hit it. <laughs> oh, hey, that did get me credit. Okay. Yeah, I got credit for the one that you aggroed too. 
Weird. Uh, this week's fashion report is a bit, a bit rough. Yeah, it is. I'm probably... Well, I'll do it on my main character because I can, you know, one-shot those bosses, but I'm not going to do it on any of my other characters. Yeah, the fact that it wants us to use raid gear. Not just raid gear, but the one raid that's bloody impossible to get unless you're, you know, max level. Yeah. Yeah, the 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 fashion report this week requires gear from Coils of Bahamut, which oh yeah, which, which like if Coils of Bahamut were in the daily roulette, you could do that no problem as long as you were level fifty. But as we were talking about like off, earlier off stream, like Coils of Bahamut is impossible to get in without like a level ninety character escorting you. Yeah, and the, uh, the the other options are from the level seventy raids. Yeah. Yeah, which, which even even with a even with the the normal gear, the normal version of the gear being fine, it would still take four four runs. Yeah. To get them all. Mm -hmm. That does sound like a pain in the ass, and yeah. I can't do it yet anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Like usually with the faster reports, the gear requirements cap out at like. As long as you have a level 60, as long as you have access to level 60 content, you should be able to get everything, no problem. Which technically this is true for, since Coils, of Coils is level 50 content, so it is on the table. But it's not actually available for level 50 characters, so yeah, whatever. You made quick work of those dragons. I was only able to slay one myself. We should be able to begin the scouting in earnest now, thanks to you. God damn it, they're nowhere in sight. You see, the blood dragons got a little too close for comfort not too long ago, and while trying to drive them off, I lost track of two very valuable etherometers. We used them to measure the ether levels in the churning mists, and they were specially made for this thin atmosphere and are nigh irreplaceable. If we don't return with them intact, then our mission here will have been for naught. Please, Lore, help us locate them. Yeah, you got it. I'll go find your doodads. How did I know it would be in here? Because you saw my fat joke about it. No, I was ahead of you. Were you? Yeah. On my screen, you weren't. Eventually, you do get a feel of, like, where in the circle things are actually going to be. It's a sort of, like, an instinctive response to having to hunt down items in circles so many times. Kind of like how, uh... Kind of like how you start to be able to tell which uh, which cut things are, are going to be voiced or not, just mm -hmm. due to subtle differences in the cinematography. Yeah. I did take my meds, right? Hang on, I need to remember if I took my meds this morning. Yes, I did. Okay. How goes your search for the etherometers? Ah, many thanks, Lord. Let's see. Excellent. The measurements seem to still be intact. With this, the first step of our mission ends in success. I'd hate to ask another favor of you, but could you please bring these etherometers to my end? I'll remain here and continue my duties. And kill some more dragons. I've got to catch up somehow. <laughs> Somebody should do a poll in Final Fantasy 16 to see how many people call it uh, Devil Trigger 
how many people call it Limit Break and how many people actually call it Semi Prime. <laughs> because I'm betting the people who use the actual name of the thing is very low. I have been calling it Semi Prime. Oh, really? Yeah, but you're a nerd. <laughs> I prefer the time geek, thank you very much. So, how are the scouts to the Northeast faring? I trust, with your help, there haven't been any mishaps. Ah, the measurements for the etherometers have already been completed. Let's see. That must be good. Sir Astinian's report included mention of the eerie, but we didn't anticipate the etheric energy to be this powerful. Hey, Tobo, how's it going? If we send this to the congregation, they should be able to glean even more information in their analysis. You have our thanks, Lord. Where's Tobo? Tobo! I need behind your choke, but... <laughs> Lore, while well, you were assisting our scouts to the northeast, two locations were discovered to the west that appear to be ancient battlefields. I think these would be ideal places to take etheric measurements. I've sent scouts to each location already, but the ever-present threat of attack makes it difficult for them to obtain accurate readings. Please, Lord, ensure their safety whilst they perform their duties. The guild name coupled with that outfit cracks me up every time I see Tomo wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Soft and Walls first and meet with my scout. He'll let you know what's required of you. To Soft and Walls. Even though Lena calls it Devil Trigger, see, that's what I'm talking about. It's just Devil Trigger. It really is. Well, like, it's even more Devil Trigger when, uh, when, when your Persona Shadow does it, because, like, they get the white hair even. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is, this is just Devil Trigger. Come on now. Oh, are they up on this, this little island here? So. There's so much of this map I haven't explored. Yep. I don't know why they came to me like I'm an expert on this place. I mean, for all of the area that we have not explored, we've still explored more than 50% of the zone is still 50% more than anybody else in this party. <laughs> Fair enough. Ah, look. My end sent word of your arrival. Your strength shall prove to be a tremendous help to our work. Why are you a southern scouting party, Dragoon? You're in the northwest. They this, got lost? This area is crawling with dire swords, making it impossible to set up the etherometers to obtain accurate readings. We need you to provide a distraction while we set up the etherometers. If you slay three of them, that should provide us ample time. One of my good friends is the owner of the FC that has the Frog FC tag. Oh, fun. Nice. Um, should I be walking? Yes. Okay, this gets me out. Whoop. Hey, there he is. I've, uh, I'll admit I've not been doing the quests. <laughs> oh, that did count for me. Huh. Cool. Alright, let's go after this dire sword. Um, actually, while you're doing this, I'm going to do my job first. Yeah, it's the power that has it, though, and I'm not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you poor yeah, bastard. Skip, you can just skip through those cutscenes while watching the stream. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely going to do those on stream so I can make fun of them. Oh, yes. It's, that that, that'll, be, that'll, be, that'll be a fun little roast. Is what that will be. Roar and like, Nash. Nope, go on. 
Oh, I was just gonna say, like, the conclusion of the Heavens one, what, what, um... Oh, uh, that, we'll that, see that. You. I was just gonna say, it, it gets a really cool idea, and then throws it on the floor, and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> Roar and gnash their teeth as they might. The dire sores were no match for the likes of you. We managed to set up the etherometers without incident. Although I must admit, it would have been a treat to see you fight for a bit longer. I must wait until the etherometers are done with their measurements. Do you think you could check on the scouting party at the other battlefield? They have been dispatched to the north, and no doubt they are facing the same troubles I have been. Pray, help them if they require it. Okay, I'm looking at the map. Where the hell are we? How do I, how do I zoom out? Uh, L1 and right stick. We are way north of sea. And as you can see, we are heading north, which is why this guy is the southern scout. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I guess the rookery is in the center of the map. Weird. Yeah. I mean, we we uh, although to be fair, we did we did kind of um, establish already that they have no idea what, uh, where, where everything is. I think the funniest is... part, the, the funniest part about the Heaven Sword Paladin quest, is that it is so bad that in Stormblood they just gave up and sent you back to the gladiators. <laughs> you know, nobody in the cast of the Paladin storyline shows up in Stormblood because they were just like, you know what? We, we burned, the, we had a chance to make these characters interesting and we burned it. Go back to the gladiator hall. They'll have uh, some stuff for you to do there. Uh, one or two show up to fight, but yeah. Technically, but I don't think they even have dialogue. Like you see them, but I don't think they have dialogue. <laughs> ah, it's the adventurer. You've come just in time. I'm in dire need of help. Against some dire sores, you see. It's a little poon, or play on words. I finished hey, setting up my etherometers, but on the way back to my post, a dire sore attacked and stole my scouting report. I'm not sure which one made off with the report, but I don't think it could have gone far. I'll do what I can to help you find it. Somebody's gotta actually turn up to help in one of these quests. That one did not drop it, okay. I think this is one of those things where there is... There is actually, like, a set number of them that you have to kill to get the result. They just don't tell you what it is. To, like, maintain the illusion that this is a random drop. It's like, that's a popular little thing in this game. A little get a sleight of hand to remove randomness from uh, board quests like this. God, I still remember when I when I played well for a bit and was told to, to get some beats from some bears and it took like 20 to get like three of the fucking things. It was like, they are on the head, right there, on the model. How do they not have beaks after they're dead? Yeah. Clearly you crushed their beaks as you shattered their skulls. Yeah, well, and that is actually the excuse. Uh, like, in later expansions, they said, like, uh, you have to get pristine beaks. You know, they added some adjective like that. You know, flawless claws. Uh, you know, immaculate, you know. Right, so you guys whatever. killed all the dire sores, and I didn't get credit for any of them. No, oh, there are see. some. All right, let me engage them this time. Yeah, it's just, it's just like... I'm using a bow. How the heck am I managing to destroy the beaks? Mm -hmm. I, literally, the point of a bow is that it kills the animal in a way to preserve the stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's precise and accurate and screw you carry for uh, sort of three. But I excuse for missing a lot by saying it's an inaccurate weapon because it's not if you know how to use it! Alright, I like, I like, I like those. 
I just have you seen that video online? Floor? Of I'm the phasing guy through the floor. Made... Why am I phasing through the floor? Huh? Uh, Look at uh, my yeah, screen. That happens sometimes. <laughs> oh, weird. I think it's because you're technically under the floor, but your, uh, but like the the mount, your your character model with or for your mount is so big that even though you're under the floor, your head's poking out the top. That makes sense. So, were you able to find the report? Yeah, but it's a little soggy. It was inside one of them. I had to rip it out with my bare hands. The awful gives authenticity. Ah, this is it? I was in the middle of writing it when the dragon attacked and laid its grubby paws on it. I can't thank you enough for your help today. Now that my report has been completed, I can continue with a more detailed survey. But first, we must collect the three etherometers set up around the area. I'd hate to impose on you again, adventurer, but could you collect them for me? Melena found a really weird place to stand, and she is just in midair <laughs> between a couple of rocks. Where is she? Over by me. Where are you? At the quest target, I assume? Yeah. No, we're right we're nearest by you. Here, I'm up over here. <laughs> I like how that went from, well, um, I have a question. Here's an answer. I have that same question, but now one step removed. Uh, ah, there you are. Yeah. Lying in my air with my flat chocobo to make a mark. Sometimes the hit block box of force is a little weird. Oh, yeah, she is standing in midair. Fun. Yeah. A couple of floating bunny girls. So, Danny, have you seen that YouTube video of the guy who tried to make a real life explosive arrowhead, like Green Arrow slash Hawkeye style? No, I haven't. Um, it was, it was very interesting. Like, extremely dangerous, as you can imagine. <laughs> One would help. Yeah, it sounds like that's the sort of thing that'll just go off randomly. Kind of, yeah. Um, because, like, I mean, there are the obvious dangers of, like, it's an explosive arrowhead. So, like, if you shoot it and it lands too close to you, you're boom. Um, but, like, the physics of it are surprisingly complicated. The, 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 da the physics of how dangerous it is are surprisingly complicated. Yeah, like, uh, as far as I can tell, you'd have to set it up so that um, it would trigger on impact. Yes, um, and the trick there means, is... Which means air. any uh, any hit of sufficient um, strength against it would uh, just make it explode in your hand. Exactly, and that would include the force of, like, the draw <laughs> as it, like, you know, is released from the bowstring. Yeah, when you shoot it. So you have to have it, like, strong enough so that the force of the impact uh, uh, causes it to blow, but not the force of the bowstring, which is, you know, tricky. A little harrowing trying to figure that out. Um, the other thing, too, it, I, that I learned is that apparently the way um, grenade launchers work is that a grenade launcher explosives are not primed on impact they are primed uh, by the rotation of the shell as it leaves the barrel, uh -huh. um, which is which makes them relatively safer because they're not going to because they're going to prime as they leave the barrel and then explode a few seconds later, based upon you know whatever the based on whatever the trigger length is, um, and you obviously can't do that with a with an arrowhead because a arrowhead doesn't spin that way. Yeah. Also, um, uh, bye, Tomo. Thanks for hanging out. Yep. Hi. See you. Ciao. Sorry. Go on. Uh, do, do your quest, and I'll continue the next time we're traveling. Fair enough. You have my thanks, adventurer. Hmm. The etheric measurements seem to be in order. The scout to the south has completed his readings as well, has he not? On your return, pray collect the etherometers from him as well. Once you have collected all the etherometers, deliver them to my end. Pray hurry, an airship should be coming to collect our measurements soon. 
I shall continue my scouting and return by a different route. Right. So that's so that's the one big danger. Here's the other big danger that I never thought of, but in hindsight is incredibly obvious. So you have an arrow with an explosive arrowhead. Uh -huh. The arrowhead of this arrow explodes. What happens to the shaft of the arrow? Oh, and uh. the splinters fly backwards towards you, don't they? Yes. Yeah. The, yes, the shaft of the arrow just immediately just it becomes a missile that goes straight back away from the explosive which means it goes straight back towards the archer Ooh, that is dangerous yeah um when the guy was firing it um like the what they did was he was like on an elevated position so he was like firing downward at the target and the shaft of the uh and like and when the thing exploded the shaft like flew up back up towards him, but it didn't have enough momentum, so it just, like, kind of arced downward away from him eventually. But... That sounds yeah, scary. Yeah, like, like, that's... You, you can you can shoot yourself with an explosive arrow, <laughs> basically. <laughs> that's scary. Even if you're if you're outside of the explosive range, the arrow is just going to boomerang right back at you. You know, um, it kind of... Uh, you, you mentioned about, uh... The, the thing that would trigger the explosive it reminds me of um, how people misunderstand what triggers a nuclear explosive. A lot of yeah. people think a lot of people think nuclear missiles trigger an impact when they're actually remote tr detonated above the target. Yeah. Um, Airburst. Yeah, which um, I see I see a lot of that um, directed at. Um, at uh, the end of Dig Digimon the movie, um, our war game, where they they defeat the Digimon that's that's inside the nuclear missile, um, disarming it, and it crashes into um, the, the 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 river in Tokyo, um, to which so many contaminating people, so many people all like, the water. Well, it's not going to contaminate if it's not um, dam if, if if it's not like triggered or anything, but. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of comments saying, "Well, I shouldn't have that it exploded." Like, no, it no. wouldn't. It wouldn't deton detonate without the detonator going off. If it were an impact explosive, any real jarring would set it off, and you can't have mm -hmm. that with a nuke. Yeah, or any explosive really, which is why remarkably few explosives are detonated on impact. It's just um, that's more of a movie trope in general, not just with nukes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Huh, it is good to see you again. So, you've come to collect the etherometers? Well, the measurements should be complete by now, but I haven't taken the time to make sure yet. I hate to bother you, but could you collect them for me? I would like to examine them before you bring them to my end, so bring them here before departing. Oh, fetch quest after fetch quest. It's, it's, also, it's also amusing when people get uh, rather confused at the fact that Dynamite won a Nobel Peace Prize. Because, um, again, because of, of uh, media showing Dynamite being used offensively, it's, it's just like the entire point of Dynamite was that it was developed for use in construction because mm -hmm. of how in, non-volatile it was made it almost impossible to use in combat and, and war. Like, with yeah. um, it's it's almost impossible to trigger TNT to explode without its um, intended intended detonation mm -hmm. system. I saw one, but I can't find it. Uh, it was inside this building that you've been running around outside of yeah, for I, a while. I went in there, but it wasn't there. I see it now. What's going on? I mean, it, it, it is in there. What, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> and here's the second one. Which I did spot before you showed up. Yeah. Alright, let me try to find the third one. Yeah, this entire quest line has been... Literally all we've done is killing devil so dire sores and collecting uh, and collecting etherometers or ether 
ether measuring things. Yeah, you had it right. Etherometers. Yeah, etherometer. Oh, yeah, I got it right the first time. Kill the devil. Kill the dinosaurs. Collect the etherometers. Kill the dinosaurs. Collect the etherometers. Repeat until evil. Great googly moogly. No great moogly googly in this case. I now want to see a moogle with googly eyes. Ah, here it is. I suppose I could have flown to spot these things from the air, but I'm satisfied with the way I did it. <laughs> Took a very long time to come up with that thought. <laughs> Yes. These measurements should prove to be satisfactory. Adventurer, please bring these to my end, along with the etherometers from the Northern Scout. You got it. Back and forth across the world. When will we do things? of 19, so two more quests after this. Oh, nice. Oh, 19 counting the Moogle quests, I see. Uh, well, it's like 19, and then quest number 20 is the actual unlock quest, which I don't think you'll be able to do. <sighs> Lord, you're back. A dragon caught me unawares, but I'll be fine after some treatment. What news do the scouts report? Oh, boring shit, just readings. Are you okay? Thank the Twelve that completed their measurements without incident. This land is proving to be more dangerous than we had anticipated. Uh, pain. I can scarce stand. Lord, pray, put the etherometers into that sealed crate over there. Hey, look, if you're too lazy to move six feet, I guess I already had them. You have my thanks, Lore. What in the seven hells was that thing? Alright, what do we got here? Vambraces. Uh, what class do I want to get these for? It's too low level for my Dark Knight. Yeah, I uh, just got the money. True. Uh, you, you could just uh, put them on the market board. There. You get like 30,000 usually. Oh, cool. Alright. I'll get the Vambraces of Babing then. Unless you think there's a different one I should get? I don't know. Vambraces of Babing. Oh, a potion is doing its work. Oh, I feel like I'm floating. Can I be like this all the time? And before long, I'll be fully recovered. I was investigating the lower layer of the rookery when a hulking shadow blotted my vision. I managed to fight the beast off and escape, but I fear it still stalks this place. It would be a grievous error to let it live. More dragoons could come to harm. I would ask you to slay the beast for us. Once the deed is done, bring something from the beast. Anything that would aid in identifying the true nature of the dragon. This thing's gonna have a Moogle pod. Uh, Alright, so lower level of the rookery. Yep, much lower level.
Rusted Basagu? What? Basagu? Basagu? I have no idea. The fuck is that? A circular plate affixed below the armpits to deflect uh, sword of lance thrust. Oh, this is one of the ones that used to be uh, an elf. Got it. The mm -hmm. kettle's in good conscience. Let our dragoons scout the area while that beast still lives. Were you able to track it down? You pulled this from the beast's corpse. Hmm. This armor dates back to before any of us were born, but that can, there can be no mistake. It was forged in Ishgard. This must mean that dragon was once a heretic and drank of the dragon blood until he... <sighs> the gilding on the armor indicates it's hundreds of years old. What would drive a man to choose to become that? To a heretic, does such a transformation indicate transcendence? I'll be right May back. Mayhap tis not for me to understand the mind of a heretic. Nevertheless, we owe you our thanks for ridding us of that abomination. Uh, aiming, healing, casting. Uh, I'll take the healing. I shouldn't have taken the money. It's just too much effort to put it on the market board and wait. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems we've completed surveys of all the ancient battlefields, thanks to you. However, I have one last request to burden you with. I would ask that you deliver two things to Sir Handelow at the Congregation. Firstly, I would have you deliver the sealed crate containing the etherometers. Secondly, I ask that you retrieve the observation log from the scout to the northeast. I shall inform my scouts at each location that our mission is complete, then we shall return to Ishgard together. Once again, you have my thanks. We would not have been able to finish our mission without you. Sealed crate. Get observation log from the Northeast Scout. I wish that had been, like, an actual boss fight, right? Like, well, maybe it would have been more difficult if I was on level. Never mind. Yeah. I've received word from Sir Mayen, and I've written down detailed information of my observations. Pray, bring it to Sir Handelo at the Congregation. The other scouts and I will remain behind at this post and continue with our work until my end calls for us. Give Sir Handelo our regards, adventurer. Uh, Sir Handelo, I guess we teleport there. Return to Foundation. So, Ethernet, uh, the Forgotten Knight? Yes. I'm learning. Slowly, now that I've left Heaven's Word behind. Mm -hmm. Ah, Lord, it seems the operation at the Churning Mist was a success. What exactly did our scouts discover? Ah, these etherometers and the observation log will prove invaluable. However, this news that my end was attacked by a heretic turned dragon is troubling. I've been mulling over the information you and Astinian have brought to light. To think that at one time, dragonkind and mankind once coexisted. Yet now we must contend with dragons born of heretics in this never-ceasing conflict. 
It is much too early to say if the news of our once peaceful past should be given credence, but it would be foolish to reject it outright. The best course of action would be to become more familiar with the history of the churning mists. It is only through knowledge that we can decide our next step. So, now I can introduce you to the Mughals. Estinian's report contains detailed information on the Mughals that inhabit that area. Mayhap they would prove to be an invaluable resource for us. Oh, buddy. Buddy, good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> Lore, it seems you've developed a bit of a relationship with them, have you not? I apologize for asking another favor of you so soon after you've returned, but I would be grateful if you could help us strike up our own relationship with them. You have my Swing. thanks. I shall personally accompany you to ensure that this meeting goes favorably, and to show the Mughals my proper respects. We shall depart shortly. Lore, I shall see you at our destination. This went much quicker than the Mughal half of the quest. Yeah, just a little bit. That took, what, two hours? And this has been 40 minutes? Thereabouts. Uh, Alright, well, back to... Uh, Bonko. Emptier of purses. <laughs> All right, I gotta talk to this Moogle. Oh, it's just a shop. Okay. Yeah. And the mender of sticks is, of course, a mender. Okay. Moglin. Nope, not Minda. Moglin. <laughs> there we go. Ah, Lord. I see you still haven't chosen a proper Moogle name, Koopa. What would you ask of me today? There are those from the surface that wish to know the history of this land. Very well. If you vouch for them, I see no reason to refuse their request. However, I would ask one thing of you in return. The Mughals wish to live in peace, and we can't do that if war rages across the land, Kupo. As long as our desires are understood, I'd like nothing more than to meet these new friends. Now where can we find this Sir Handelow? Right behind me. Excellent, Kupo. I shall dispatch members of the Palm Guard to escort him at once. Lore, please go along with them. They may be shy around so many new visitors from the surface, Koopa. Okay. One so. last trek across the zone, because they just couldn't help themselves. Good thing I've got my comfy chair. My comfy chair. That was such a good skit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. Do 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 do. Banana. -na. This is one last trek across the world, huh? Wow, this is a long trip. Oh, we're going to the rookery, aren't we? Yeah. You're going to make us walk all the way back, aren't you? Ah, Lore, it seems you were able to arrange a meeting after all. You have my thanks. So that's a Moogle. I've never seen something so cute. 
Oh, hey, Moglio's here. There are so many people from the surface, Koopo. I'm... I'm a little nervous. Excuse me. Welcome to the Churning Mist, Koopo. Moglin has told us about you. It's our pleasure to guide you to Mago. Ah, where are my manners? I'm Commander Handelo of the Temple Knights. We are honored to receive your guidance. Uh, the camera angle's not going to let my end finish her bow. Come on. Furthermore, we appreciate your willingness to impart on us your knowledge of the Churning Mist. If there is aught you would require in return, we would gladly repay your kindness. Sir Handelow, you come from a large city on the surface, yes? You might have exactly the knowledge we need, Koopo. We've long yearned to learn how to repair stone structures. If we did, we could repair Zenith with our own paws. Oh, is this going to be a crafter beast tribe quest line? Yep. Blacksmithing, I guess. Us Moogles have a sacred agreement with the great worm Hress Velger that binds us to protect the Holy Tower. But after a thousand years, time has worn its luster. Zenith is beloved by Hress Velger and stands as a symbol of the friendship between the Landlords and Skylords. If we could restore its former glory, maybe the bond between your two races would be revitalized as well. Oh, that's sweet. I like that. Yeah, the, the crafting quests are the crafting quests are always like really wholesome. I kind of love them. Yeah, I, I like, like it. I went on a binge where I just did all crafting for a couple of months back in spring, and it's just it's, it's so nice. It's comfy. It's, you're just building things and trying to make people happy. Very zen. Yeah. Indeed, the Holy See's knowledge of stoneworking is vast. Very well. Although the road ahead of me may be difficult, I will do all within my power to convince the Holy See to send stonemasons and carpenters. Oh, carpenter is the class, isn't it? To any do what they can. Any crafter. Oh, fair any enough. Any crafter can do it. Oh, like the Exile one. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. You are too kind, Koopo. However, there's one more thing I must ask of you. It may be too soon to allow so many people from the surface into Hress Velger's beloved tower. It could unnerve him. For now, we would ask that you teach us what you can at Mago, and then we can use our own paws to repair Zenith. It may start with us repairing but a single brick, but if we keep at it, soon Zenith will sparkle as it hasn't in a millennium, Kubo. I understand the Mughal's concern. I know all too well that a thousand years of animosity cannot be forgotten overnight. Let us work with diligence, and brick by brick we shall rebuild that which has been lost. I'm glad we've come to an agreement, Koopo. Now, let us be off to Marco. There's so much to share with you. Alright, uh, Materia 4. Oh, it's a craftsman materia. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, these actually do kind of sell well uh, because crafting materia are more valuable than uh, combat material. So either the CP or control tend to be more valuable. So when it says CP plus four, I'm assuming it doesn't mean you get four extra CP. It means it's got some hidden CP stat that no, governs... No, the CP, CP is your is mana. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it just gives you four more mana points. Oh. Just straight up. Like, like well, that's like, kind of pitiful. It's, you, you you would think that, but four CP can be the difference between a success and failure in certain circumstances. Like, so, some of the, uh, some of the requirements for uh, crafting high-level uh, materials are very tight. And so every point matters. Gotcha. Which is why crafting materia is so valuable. Um, and so yeah, uh, the, you left before I could show you, but like if you had looked at the map uh, back at Monocombe, there is now a red quest there. And as soon as you get a level 50 crafter, uh, you can go do it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, well, I'll have to work on that off stream. Yeah. Also, I teleported to Monocombe expecting to do something here. 
Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, this is the part where you would switch to your crafting quest and pick up the next quest, but you don't have that yet. Seething Stonemason. Are you fed up with the Moogles, too? Yes. <laughs> Spoilers, but yes. <laughs> uh, all right, well, uh, I guess we're going to get on to class quests. Uh, before we do, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, I need to blow my nose pretty thoroughly. Um, I will be back in a few minutes, guys. Alrighty. going to do next. He has no shortage of options. Um, for those of you who have not been following our off-stream activities, which we have not broadcast in any way, shape, or form, uh, we've gotten several jobs for more to uh, do some uh, do some job quests on. So There are plenty of options. Oh, good. And the uh, commercial is the uh, is the uh, drunk driving PSA. How cheerful! Oh, my! I got. I'm getting a commercial for um, Final Fantasy 16. No, yeah, I've, I've gotten that commercial before, but not this time. The second commercial is for some uh, cell phone carrier. So, uh, without spoilers, how far are you up to, by the way? I'm um, in 16. Um, um, I just bought. I, ju I just met mid. Okay. She's fun. She is fun. Not beat it yet, but I'm thinking it. 16 might be on my top five somewhere. Yeah, I, 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 I'm still in the thick of it, so I'm reserving judgment. But I am liking what I'm playing. Once again, well, once again, I'm in the middle of a work weekend, so, like, this is kind of my only free time for the weekend, and so I won't get to play Final Fantasy 16 again until, like, Tuesday. Mm. Uh, so, it's gonna, gonna be a little bit before I can uh, give you a progress report. Fair enough. Still, I'm glad that uh, Midgetal is keeping the uh, name and tradition. says the prologue did not grab her but it's in there yeah it's it's a little like the game just kind of like crawls upward as you go i am finding like like the beginning is very much oh we're just doing final fantasy game of thrones uh neat uh not not like the most you know i'm not how to describe it it's like it's like yeah i see what you're doing and fun but that's about as far as the compliment goes for the prologue of 16. And then it just kind of keeps slowly crawling upwards from there. You know, I think, you I like, think the... after I think... the prologue, you meet Sid, and that's a boost. You get, like, the Garuda abilities, and that's another boost. And, you know, things just, keep, things just keep improving as the game goes on. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I did like the prologue, honestly. Um, yeah. I can I, I it's good introduction to the characters and the motives and yeah. the uh, and the phoenix versus e fruit fight is absolutely fantastic yeah the the phoenix of fruit fight is great it's like it's, it's also like speaking of like wearing its is on its sleeve like you have how the entire prologue is just very game of thrones 
and then that fight is literally the opening scene from Two Towers. Is it? Yes. Oh, for God's sake, you uncultured swine. Um, <laughs> I, I don't care for uh, Lord of the Rings. But yeah, like the the like the the shot of Phoenix and Efri falling down the chasm, fighting each other, is straight out of Two Towers. Yeah, the, the, honestly, the scale just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and we've had one of the I've had one of the largest scale fights that I've ever seen in Final Fantasy, possibly yeah. the largest. Yeah. Here, just 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 watch this. I right, post in the the co-op group chat. Into the video, and then just oh, I just I, I I fast forwarded it slightly. No, no, I mean I I I was watching it, and then it just cut out, and then went back to Discord rather than full screen. That's weird. All on its own. When it comes to Tolkien, I did I did like this audiobook version of Hobbit that I had as a kid, but, mm -hmm. and uh, and I have seen um, uh, I've I've well man I've managed to watch all of um, the um, the weird animated rotoscope Lord of the Rings that goes through. Oh like, yeah, the, the, the weird animated book. movies are so novel. They're very seventies. Yeah, they're like you. I, I didn't watch them for the story. I just watched them because... You watched them for the drug tip is what you watched them for. Yeah. Which again, very 70s. Okay, I'm back. Hello. Hello, huh. we were talking about drug trip. Are those Moogle slippers? Yep. Yeah, they're one of, the, one of the rewards you can get from the Moogle event. So from the Moogle, um, uh, the Moogle Beast Tribe. Oh, yeah. Yes. Nice. Hey, Elkia, how's it going? Okay, so we've got... We're going to do Scholar, Machinist, and Dark Knight today at least. Uh, I don't know if that's going to take us the next three hours, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll start with Scholar 60. Okay, because we're almost done with that one. Uh, I'm gonna have this Moogle repair my shit, and then we'll go do Scholar 60. Excuse me. Still can't get over the- I still can't get over the fact that the, um... The warrior trainers are called Curious Gorge and Broken Mountain. Yeah.
Yeah, the Scholar Quests have some really cool lore bits. I've been experiencing them all through. Uh, we're on Scholar 60. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, well, I, like, I mean, in general, the stuff they do with the... Uh, Scholar's one. I like their take on Toddberries. Yes. Yeah, that was yeah, really like the... cool and unexpected. Yeah, yeah, very unique. Yeah, that's like the... I, I blanked on the Tawnberry, but yes, I love the Tawnberries in this game. They are good, wholesome little terror creatures. Oh, we're we're definitely going to be doing Crafter Quests at some point. I have those leveled up, or some of them leveled up. I have Carpenter at 30, Blacksmith at 40, Miner at 30, and Botanist at 30. Use the Firmament to get them there. They're just not on the uh, schedule for today. Mm-hmm. So here's the list. I have Darknet at 60, Monk at 30, Scholar at 60, Machinist at 50, Summoner at 60, because Scholar's at 60, Carpenter at 30, Blacksmith at 40, Miner at 30, Botanist at 30, Rogue at 24. We're going to do, um, we're going to get Rogue to 30 before I start doing Rogue quests. I'm also going to be leveling Dragoon to 60 over the next couple weeks. It's also worth pointing out that War has played no Summoner at all. So like that quest is still at level thirty five. So there there's like a there's a whole epic journey there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Serto. Dissipation orders your fairy away will grant you a full ether flow stack. Also increases Please. healing magic potency by twenty percent. Some of the AOS cannot be executed while under the effect of dissipation. Can only be executed while in combat. That's, uh, that's one of your big uh, emergency buttons. Current yeah, fairy man. will return once the effect expires. Okay, I don't have to re-summon her. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the jerk is that we eat them. Ah, I gotcha. Om nom nom. Sacrifice the fairy for a few seconds for a little extra healing potency. I have it, Lore. The means to track our invisible void set. The time has come to discuss our attack. Oh, that storm in the background is perfect weather for this conversation. Oh yeah, lucky. That's the weather in the zone, right? That's not just for this cutscene. Yeah, that's just that's just yeah. uh, that zone weather. I'm also in the zone doing my warrior quests. Nice. And I've just finished. It's always nice when the weather cooperates with the mood of the quest, because, like, that's in no way a guarantee. Yeah. The weather is just the weather, and sometimes you get, like, a bright sunny day while... While doing dramatic doing combat planning to kill a demon. Yeah. Or, like, it'll be, like... Or, like, it'll be after, like, a tragic moment, and everybody is all doom and gloom because Roshafuck died or whatever... And the weather outside is like bright and sunny. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I once had this. I once had this quest where a character was like, "Look how beautiful the sky is," and it was just pissing it down. Hey, I like rain. <laughs> yeah, but it I wouldn't just... say it's beautiful though. <laughs> yeah. When it hits the ground, it's beautiful, but uh, the sky, not so much. Ha ha! I've been waiting for this day. What's the plan, Serato Carato? First, we will need to track our quarry. I believe it has been feeding upon the ether of local creatures to regain its strength. The way in which it feed the way in which it feeds leaves behind unique ethereal traces. As breadcrumbs mark the path of a hungry child, this trail will lead us straight to the void set. How are we to detect these tracers? With Lily's aid. She can sense where the Void Scent has left Aether undevoured. We will begin our search where you unearth the Amphora and follow where Lily leads. Once she senses the Void Scent is near, we will force it to show itself. Lily will illuminate the area, and her light will dispel the magics concealing it. Right, my dear? With the Void Scent visible, we will attack with all our might. The Marines will charge and kill it before it causes more damage. 
This is it, Lore, our chance to prove the might of our core. Little one, the fate of the realm is in your hands. Are you ready? Then our course is clear. It would be really funny if the fairy was the only person in the cutscene that was voiced. <laughs> then our course is clear. May our plan ensure the sickness never again claims a victim. To victory, come hells or high water. Come hells or high water. Okay, let's get tracking. So I'm trying to make myself look older by giving myself white hair, but with this outfit, it just makes me look even more like the uh, main an character. An edgy anime boy. Yeah. I just look like the main character, TM. <laughs> There's a comic about somebody joining the joining the Scions, and every because every last one of them has white or, um, or, or blonde hair, it's like uh, the, the, their companion is just like, I think you've joined a cult. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it this? I think it is that. Uh, right. Enter the Wanderer's Palace with a party of other players. Enter Wanderer's Palace hard. Oh no, that's the uh, that's the uh, that's the Wanderer's Palace hard quest. Floating City of Dim, so that's uh, go. You're going to go up to uh, Outer was Outer Lanosia, yeah. Lanosia. Uh, in the west side of it. Same the place with for... those floating crystals that we took the screenshot. Yeah. Which will it's also, also look the... very nice in this uh, nighttime weather. And it's also one of the. Uh, it's also where you fell to your death repeatedly in um, in Leap of Faith. Oh, oh, oh. Don't remind me. You really should try that again now you have a work. Yeah. Yeah, true. I should. Saw the edge of a person's mount just fade out. <laughs> uh. Ah, Ethereal Trace. Actually, now that I think about it, I also had another moment where, again, somebody was talking about the beauty of the sky, and it was just foggy, and it's like... What sky? We can't see it. <laughs> it's just, just like, this is, this is very British. Through the ethereal traces remaining from devoured prey, your fairy senses the void scent is moving towards Zelma's run. So clearly the fairy can talk. Mount. I should probably summon my carbuncle at some point. Probably. Although I think I think the action kicks off in a solo duty, so there might not be much point yet. If I remember this quest correctly. Yeah, you're riding a void scent to hunt a void scent. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how they've re recontextualized um, so many classical monsters. Like the Arrow Man like was the just, and, and yeah, and the Arrow Man was just a monster. Now it's now now it's specifically something demonic mm -hmm. from from another world. Mm -hmm. All right, to Camp Bronze Lake we went outwards and just came back. What is it, Lore? But that way lies Camp Bronze Lake. What purpose could it have there? The healing waters? No, I suppose it is home to... Of course! 
the wounded maelstrom soldiers. It means to spread the sickness anew through them. We must stop it. Quickly, to the camp. This is actually a pretty small zone. Yeah. I mean, there is, like, a, another half of it on the other side of the lake, but it's still pretty small. Most of it, most of the landmass is lake. Forward, the Royal Marines. Level sink in effect, not that it matters. Damn it! This place is bloody crowded! If we don't find the void set quickly, there's to be a lot more Tonberries. But how do we draw it out into the open if we can't see it? Pixie dust, maybe? Get the soldiers to evacuate. Lore, find the void set with Lily's light. Haha! -ha, fairy dust it is! Carbuncle, come out! Only you can track the void set. Only you can stop what I say. I'm joking, but that really does look like a like a fire in the void. <laughs> Oh, I want the green ethereal traces for the quest, don't I? I think you don't think it matters. I think you just want them. Well, uh, I have done two ethereal traces detected for purple ones, and it hasn't advanced my uh, quest. So I'm going to go for the green ones. Aha, it is the green ones. You'll notice I still have Summon Selene on my hotbar, even though it got taken away. Yeah. I'm not removing that until I absolutely have to. I am uh, doing the same with other abilities. Oh, it's a heck dive! Fixing given that we're after uh, helping from chess Tonberries. There's some up here. Okay. Why is it discarded? Oh, is it going to turn some of these guys into tall berries that we'll have to fight? Uh-oh. Oh, it's running. Notice, Dalka. Oh, you are 
ugly. I like this monster design. At long last. Uh, monster! For Limsa, for the Tonberries, and for glory. Attack! To victory! Come hells or high water! Oh, it's gonna try to infect us. Bitoso, huh? Yeah, uh. Lore information about, um. There are seven hells and seven heavens. The, the, the. Six of each are tied to elements, and they are supposedly located at the same, same place in the constellations. Um, for example, the, um, the heaven of the heaven of, of lightning um, would hold Bralva, and then um, and um, in a the, the heaven itself being a a, a fortress constantly being destroyed by Ralga and rebuilt by Biagon. But the equivalent hell is the need Hey, Mario is overpowering my co-host? Uh, all right, let me turn it down a little. Yeah, yeah the need that, the need that palace is a never-ending uh, lightning storm, which is where the hell... Okay, can you tell me this after this fight, please? I'm yeah, you're, you're, no like... one has paid any attention to what you're saying. <laughs> okay, sorry. No one did game or out, did it? Sorry. <laughs> All right, turning down the game. Oh shit! Oh no, my marines got turned into tonberries because I was trying to. God damn it! Yeah, you you were you got a soon of them. All right. Uh, I'm turning the yeah, game they, down they, a little more. This fight's a little tough. Bring in chat back. And yeah, you gotta assume that them, otherwise they will... They, they, they have a... They, they don't just take damage, they have a stacking debuff, and if you don't assume it, they turn into Tom Berries and you automatically lose. Uh, gotcha. It's been a long time since I did this one. I don't really remember the mechanics. That's How often do I have to assume to them? I mean, how often does do they get stacks? I I don't know. I'm asking. You, it's you, it's you, your you, game. You watch me. You pay attention. Yeah. You're just gonna have to keep an eye out. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna have to mouse over them with my controller uh, every few seconds to see. Uh, are you not able to target them? You if you if you put your weapon away, at which point you can target. Uh, oh, I can target them. them. I'm just. I just can't see that they have stacks unless I, uh, unless I target them. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll appear on the under the health bars. Oh, even if I'm not targeting them. No, you, 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 you have to target, target them. Yeah, no, I know, I, I know where it's going to appear. That's why I have to target them. Yep. Yeah. This is another one of those. This is another one of those situations I was talking about earlier, where the the healing role, the the healing job quests are always a little annoying because they don't put the NPCs in your party, and so much of healing is built around like targeting party member mechanics or, or mechanics that target party members. Yeah, and it's so, pretty annoying. And so, yeah, it's it's a little bit of a hassle to heal in these situations, but you just kind of gotta. Just gotta get good. <laughs> get good. Get good. <laughs> that game is never fucking coming out. <laughs> Which game? Which one? Silk Song. <laughs> oh, it will eventually. Yeah. Which one's Silk Song? The sequel to Hollow Knight. 
Ah. I can, I can how... skip the cutscene. What am I doing? Hey, yeah. I was just thinking about how Hornet says get good at the uh, end of the game. And then that got me thinking about Silk Song, and then I got sad. Alright, I need to focus. You do. <laughs> I'm not good at healing at the best of times. You do fine. Zolka, I need to assume the you. The other important thing about this boss fight is uh, don't stand too close to your party. Uh, otherwise, you will catch them in AoEs when the boss targets you. Because, like, just now, Alka got hit by an AoE that was targeted because he was standing too close to him. Alright, I've detawn buried them for the moment. Can Asuna only get rid of one status effect at a time? Yes. Ah, okay. And it seems to prioritize whatever um, effect has the shortest cooldown left, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Charge action choice tends to be a bit random. However, when you're in the Palace of the Dead... But there, there's definitely a priority system. I forgot if it's... It's either highest countdown left or lowest countdown left. I think it's lowest. I, I, I do know that in Palace of the Dead, when you get pacified and silenced, it will always prioritize the one that... Oh, hey, I've got, I've got Tonberry friends. You have Tonberry friends. Who are now getting targeted by Batoso. Remember, you're the healer, not the damage dealer. Focus on keeping your... Oh wait, sucker's not gonna do anything! <laughs> yep. Just a nut in your passing. Got it, okay. Phew! Is... is it? Get back. It's trying to infect us. No. Now, Lore. Hell yeah. Don't stand where it evaporated, though. That you'll just turn into a Tonberry. <laughs> we are victorious! Ooh, plop, 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 plop of a Tonberry's feet. <laughs> yes, when I think of the horror it visited upon my people, I... Oh my god, I, I have never heard its feet sound. Is that its feet sound through water? Is that why I'm hearing it now? But, I think that's just the sound, period. <laughs> but now, no one else will share our fate. My thanks to you and Alka-Zolka both. Not the other uh, other uh, soldiers, though. They, I don't care about them. Ah, you've got my gratitude as well. Good to see proper Royal Marines at it again. But you cry at the drop of a hat, Alka. Indeed it is. Today, the torch is passed to you. May the Royal Marines evermore defend the people. 
There's no way that rubbing chainmail gloves against your eyes is comfortable. No, not in the slightest. Oh my god, they've all got... Okay. Bloody Tonberry eyes, always running with... Oh, who am I kidding? You did a fine job. A fine job indeed. But don't you dare think of easing up on your training on account of one victory. If you sully the name of my beloved Marines, I'll flay the skin off your back. The best time, Barry. <laughs> An honor fighting beside you, madam. If you ever have need of us, you need only ask. Ain't common feeling that safe in a battle. I reckon those Nibians knew what they were doing with them scholars and fairies. I'll have your back, too, if you ever you need it. You have won a great victory today, my friend. Your allies will appreciate it if you tell them so. Yeah, I'm telling them. Imagine, Lord, defeating a void scent over 1,500 years old. When we first met, I didn't dare think we'd achieve such things together. The threat is gone, and the Royal Marines are bored anew. Not a bad day's work, I dare say. But we are far from finished. I do not know what threats the future holds, but they will not find us unprepared. Not as long as I have aught to say about it. To victory, my friend! Come hells or high water! I have gathered the void sense remains. With careful research, they should yield the secrets I need to heal my people. I am not so naive as to believe the answers will come quickly, yet the cure shall be ours one day. For now, my people will labor so that we may walk with yours towards a brighter dawn. I would see a future where we are part of the realm, not shunned by it. Thank you, my friend. Lily chose most wisely in you. Yes, she did. Allow me to pass on to you one of Nim's mightiest abilities. Dissipation. It evaporates your fairy. The fairy that trusts you so much. It is a secret spell meant for use only by those scholars who have earned the full trust of their fairy companions. Use it with care. Now I must return to my people, and you to yours. Fare you well, and may our efforts make tomorrow a brighter day. Plop, 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 plop. Lena, imagine if this was like Undertale. They are you late and become Tom Berries? <laughs> you failed us, Lord. Sorry, I you, failed, you, failed, you failed the solo duty like a scrub. <laughs> <laughs> Dissipation. Also a, a set of scholar armor, which is probably... Uh, which probably contains several upgrades for you, at least. Alright, well let's open that. I'm level 210. That's better than my scholar stuff. All right, let's see. Yep, the, all of it is. Thankfully, I can't wear the stupid hat. Oh, wait, no, that's a different kind of silly hat. Oh, yeah, it's it's a... Uh, here, let me... It's a steampunk uh, top hat. Yeah, it's the steampunk top. <laughs> Do I still have... I don't... I don't think I have mine in my inventory anymore because I upgraded it a while ago. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I do not have it in my inventory anymore, but yeah, it's it's the steampunk hat that I've been like, months prior to this. Also, you should, uh... Also, you should, uh... Um, uh, extract your materia, because you've got some gear that has materia to extract. Alright. Actions uh, and traits... General, because that's because uh, like extracting material is just free money, so you need to do it all the time. Piety four, quick tongue four. Uh, 
check all of your gear, not just the stuff that's equipped, because I'm pretty sure you have other Way stuff. Way ahead of you. Free money. Lots of materia. It's going to fill up my inventory again. Good God, I have so many materia left to extract. Mm-hmm. You, you've been laying out slide for a while. You can tell that uh, that gear has materia left ready to extract because... They've got, it's got the your, white... It, it's got yeah, the it's white... Got the white um, yeah, it's got the white pip. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fun word. Pip. pip pip cheerio. Hot hot. Howdy ho. Achieve it unlocked and extract science three. Cute. <laughs> oh, the puns. Okay, what is the symbol next to the gear name that looks like a Velociraptor claw? Like this black oh, that, oh, that means high qual. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. I gotcha. It, uh, high, that, that means any item with that symbol is a high quality item. It's like a shine effect or something, I guess. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it, it's... Um, in crafting, what it means is... If it's a high-quality ingredient, um, it makes it easier to craft a high-quality product. And high-quality products tend to be more potent. Um, yeah. If, it, if, just... you're talking about, if you're talking about gear, the, probably the better stats. If you're talking about um, uh, consumables, they will heal or uh, augment slightly more. Um, Potion, potions will have uh, high percentages and higher caps. Yeah, potions have a higher percentage of healing, etc. Um, and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, the exact effect of high quality varies depending on what exactly you're talking about. But Makes sense. But like, long story short, high quality means better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, what was I about to do? Dark Knight. Uh, no, Dark Machinist Knight. first. Oh, Machinist first? Okay. Uh, all right, so um, machinist quest. Which I believe takes you back to foundation. It does. If you hover over crafted gear, you can press Alt to see high quality stats. Unfortunately, I'm on controller on my PS5. I'll be here way, but I don't know it. A starry Leviathan would be really funny to hear uh, Frey talking about slaying Leviathan in their quest line. <laughs> uh, Alright, Heat Blast delivers an attack with a potency of 200. Do I already have that on my hotbar? You might. 
That's I the do one not. that you can only that's the one that you can only cast while under while overcharged. Yeah. Oh hey, I've got Peloton. I've never actually cast Peloton. Uh yeah, that's because you had not played a uh, a ranged DPS very much. Um, mm -hmm. It's a nice it's a nice little thing for running around town. I know I have on many occasions uh, specifically switched to one of my ranged DPS jobs for running around town just because you have Peloton. <laughs> yeah. One of the one of the um one of the jumping puzzles or one of the jumps requires sprint or peloton, so uh, it's easier having peloton there, that, just because you don't have to wait, wait for it to recharge. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Greetings, Lore. Have you become practiced at defeating your foes from a distance? With the range of our weapons, even skyborne dragons will learn to respect the threat posed by a trained machinist. Despite the proven efficacy of our cannons and ballistas, however, many knights of Ishgard continue to eschew firearms in favor of the spear and the sword. Ah, oh, the creaking chains of tradition. Hark! The very creaking I spoke of draws near! Ugh, oh, the stifling heat and sulfurous stench. I can scarcely breathe. And worse, I can scarcely bear the sight of mine own son, garbed in such filthy garments. Why must you persist in this infatuation with smithing, of all things? Well, he likes to do it, asshat. Does everybody have the same butler? I swear we get there are the same manservant models for every noble. <laughs> Tis called machinistry, father, and you need not come at all if the air in the workshop so offends you. The mass produced. <laughs> Would that I could shed this onerous duty. But as manufactory chief, I must need supervise its operations. Supervise? You barely visit but once a moon and relegate every management task to Frumolo. And what of it? Smithing is a commoner's profession, even as overseer is the role of a noble. As one of the four founders of Ishgard, House Hyenar enjoys a privileged position. But misfortune has waged a constant war of attrition on our forces, and our claim to that position grows weak. Thus must we attend to our duties with uncommon zeal, even duties as common as this one. Well, where's your zeal, then? But we shall not suffer this mean predicament forever. No, my son, you will reclaim the honor of our family with spear in hand. You must needs become a knight of skill on parade and bear our flag onto the field of battle. I think he's going to tell you to fuck off in polite terms. Father, the face of war changes with each passing day. Soon will come a time when machinists shall form the bulk of our armies. Should you cling to these stagnant ideas of yours, you will be swept over by the wave that carries us forward. The tire of your flights of fancy, Stephanivian. Without successes to back them, your arguments ring as empty as my treasure room. The Holy See has announced a turning. You will best serve your house by returning to the practice field, and thence claiming victory in the melee. Uh, how about no? I regret that you were subject to our squabbles, but Father's attitude is sadly representative of the greater part of Ishgard's populace. Their heads may as well be made from the stone of the city walls. I have, however, designed a weapon of such brilliance that the light of its potential will penetrate even the densest mind. Rostenthal and Joy will accompany me to Raincatcher Gully to gather materials for the prototype. Why don't you join us? Practicing your marksmanship in Ishgard will only invite suspicion and ridicule, and this is the perfect opportunity to receive further tutelage from Rostenthal. That you might also train under the warm rays of Lenotia's sun is simply a fortuitous boon. I need to empty my, uh, hang on. What the hell? That godbert was moving like crazy. 
<laughs> uh, I need to empty my weapon chest a little. Uh, okay, I can turn that to inventory. They three butlers on the butt butler wrench. <laughs> Right, that's yeah, that a was gun that was freaking out on your Yeah, the poor Orago is so adorable. I love it. The poor Orago is great. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't need this martial codex anymore. I turn to inventory. I need the culinarian prime pan. Red mage rapier. Dark knight arm from level 50. So I'll return that to inventory. Three slots is good enough for the moment. Uh, all right, to Lenosia. To Wineport. Almost spoke to Rogan. He had a rather relying like hair. Huh. It's silly. Yeah, it's it's definitely not silly to poke the lions. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> that silence was so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Danny. <laughs> I cannot wait for FanFest in two weeks. I, I want to see what they've got cooking. I wish I could watch. But, alas... Yeah, my job requires me to remain ignorant. Yeah, but there will probably be like... Yet another Machinist class quest inside of Fate. Yeah, Sorry, be, go I mean, on. There, there will be some news that we will be able to share just because, like... Like, I mean, looking at the... the if we do get to see the uh, Fembros, or not the Fembros, the, the Fembros, Fembros guard, yes. Like, that's not going to be a spoiler, because you're just going to see those running around sooner or later anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we can probably... We, we, we can... we can Obviously, if you give any, like, reveals of jobs or anything, we can show you that. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm, ex I'm, I'm expecting at least a teaser trailer for the cinematic. That will definitely be spoilers, but... Yeah. At least we'll be able to warn you about it and say, hey, avoid... Uh Avoid Twitter completely. Yes. <laughs> oh, there, there was um, there was something rather funny about uh, the, when they first revealed some of the Endwalker trailer, uh, because um, the music had been had been had been written and was uh, and was playing. Serkan had done all that, but um, at the time, Koji hadn't written the lyrics for it, so. The piece of people sing like, <laughs> <laughs> instead of actual lyrics. Wow. All right, Rostenthal. Got yourself dragged out here as well, did you? The boss said he needed some Magitek pawns, and I just had to open me big gob about this garly and wreck in the gully. It's been rustling here for nigh on... It's been rusting here for nigh on five years now, though, so any useful bits and bobs was likely stripped out long ago. But seeing as we've trekked all this bloody way, we might as well see how far you've come in your shooting. Go say hello to the other two. Keep them safe while they concentrate on their scrounging. Uh, all right, where are you? Oh yeah, one of the things I'm very much looking forward to with the fan fest is what t-shirt is Yoshi P going to be wearing? <laughs> Practicing your marksmanship, are you? Maybe I'll have half a moment's peace to look for this part while you watch me back. Ugh, not again. Take care of that, would you, Lord? Uh, take care of what? Melina killed it before you could. You oh, hey, it, uh, here's Stefan Idiot. <laughs> ah, you came! Splendid. Though I am afraid the rewards have yet to meet the risks of this monster-infested crash site. And speaking of monsters... Oh, you're just going to be that casual about it, huh? Oh, no. 
bugs. Yeah, that was one of the t-shirts. Uh, every fan fest, um, Yoshi P wears um, a t-shirt to hint at something coming up, and the the Vieira hint was a was a t-shirt of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Uh, the Dark Knight was Batman. Ha! Nice. Um, Samurai. Reaper. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Reaper was some sort of band. Can't remember which one. Yeah. Some, some band with the name Reaper. Yeah, um, the, the, the most interesting, the most cryptic one was a picture of Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man... The, uh, the old, older movies were directed by Sam Raimi. If you say that in Japanese, you get Samo Raimi. Uh, Samurai, Samurai. <laughs> that one's a little, uh, that one's a little, that one's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. yeah. You've been working at those shots, haven't you, lass? I'd say you're good and ready to... Bloody hell, that's a big one. You're up, Lore. What, are you gonna, just going to stand here and watch? Where is it? Oh, hello, there you are. Nope, not Rostenthal, the Gubu. Not the Midge Swarm either. There we go. Uh, Alright, whoever's killing this stuff uh, before I can do anything but target it, please let me play the game. Alright, nice form, lass. Tightly grouped shots. Or wait, that was a level 35 enemy. I was just killing it myself. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're level 50, so... Thing? Now, was it just me eyes playing tricks, or did someone other than guts drop out of that thing's belly? Okay, so apparently I disemboweled it. Gross. Hmm. Looks like a bit of machinery. The boss would have a better idea than me. No Stephanivian, I've got some intestine covered machines. Confound it. All this way, and not to show for it. Aside from your obvious improvements in marksmanship, of course. Hmm? What's that you have there? Magitech Gyroscope. And this spelled out along with the creature's innards, you say. Extraordinary. By the fury, do you know what this is? You found the very component I was searching for. What did the Gubu eat it for, I wonder? That's wonderful, my lordship. Our fortunes took a turn for the better the moment you walked through the workshop doors, Lore. Finding a rare magitech part in a beast's belly ain't fortune. That's bloody sorcery. Or <laughs> so I'd think if I didn't see you shoot the damn thing with my own two eyes. Nice work there, by the way, Lore. I can already hear the whirring of my invention come to life. Come, we must return to the manufactory at once. Alright, well, that was an easy quest. Oh, that Google just spawned inside me. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not the map. What am I doing? Return to Foundation. That, was, that truly was a stroke of luck, Lore. With that wretchedly rare gyroscope in hand, it will only be a matter of time until I have a working prototype. Instead of twiddling your thumbs until its completion, however, you shall have your hands full mastering a new skill. Rustenthal bade me pass on to you the particulars of Heat Blast. Trade hard, my friend. 
All right, let's add that to the uh, hot bar. Now that's the one you use with uh, overheat. It's um, it's got a much shorter global cooldown than 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 pretty much any um any other one of yeah. your global cool, global cooldown skills. Yeah, so that gives you your new burst phase where you do overheat and then uh, what's it called? Gauss round or ricochet. Yeah, Gauss rounds. You just fire as many shots as you can in those five seconds. Also, because they're a global cooldown, they power up wildfire. So you use overheat and yes. drop wildfire and then heat blast ricochet, heat blast ricochet, heat blast ricochet in order to um, power up wildfire, which will hit nice and hard. Mm -hmm. It's a nice bit of synergy for a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Okay, I'm really sorry, but I was focused on rearranging my hotbar. Can you repeat all that? Uh, basically, um, the because the global cooldown on a, on heat blast is shorter, you can use um, you can use wildfire first, which is powered up by using global cooldowns, which means heat blast will power it up. So you use overheat, you use wildfire, and then you use um, heat blast and have Gauss round weave between each use of um, Heat Blast. Gotcha. So, Heat Blast, Gauss round, Heat Blast, Gauss round, until... Um... Until the wildfire goes off? Yes. Something to practice at a, uh, at a training dummy, too, because it's, uh, it's a lot of fast buttons, much more so than, much more so than you're used, well, used to with your once every two second spell casting as Black Mage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rook auto turret. Cool. That's your other big cooldown. Potency increases as battery gauge exceeds required cost at times deployment up to a maximum of 75. Duration 9 seconds. Recast six seconds. It's got a six second timer and um, it's only got a nine second duration. It's only got a six second cooldown. Uh, well, it, I mean, that's meaningless because uh, it requires a gauge. To uh, it, it requires a gauge to build up. There, uh. there is there is zero way to recast it six seconds after casting it a second. Uh, you know, the first time. Oh, it costs 50, but it takes your whole gauge, no matter how much you have? Yes. Gotcha. And it does more damage if you have... Yeah, the, lo the, the 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 it's a battery gauge, so the more battery you build up, the longer your, your robot can fly for. Uh, well, yeah, that used to be how it works. Now it just gets more... It used to be that uh, the higher battery gauge gave it a longer duration. Now it just gave it more... Now the way it works is it just gives you more damage. Oh yeah, I just want it to work that way. I just saw you glitching from the floor to the ceiling. Are you up in the pipes, Minta? Yes. Where'd you go? I, I went up into the pipes. <laughs> yes, I'm... Uh, what, are you inside the pipe? Oh, you were hidden behind the pipe. Okay. Right, your name hides behind the environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I've seen... Uh, you can sometimes see, like, your... <laughs> Your name halfway in front of something and halfway behind something. What's so funny, Minda? It's just, just like you wondering, like, where the hell is Minda doing? <laughs> just your, your sheer confusion at me being the cat up in the attic. You should have seen it on my screen. It was it was very glitchy. Yeah, I, well, I was watching just now. The, the stream delay, and yeah. Ah, Lore, splendid! You arrived at the very moment I completed my newest machinist marvel. Well, within the very hour, at least. It is unfortunate that many Ishgardians cannot appreciate the practicality of my work. People such as my father, for instance. Damn it. Are you going to unload your daddy issues on me now? Oh, nope, here he is. Oh, is there naught that can be done for this dreadful odor? Stefan Nivian, my son, the days of shunning your nightly training have come to an end. Never should I have allowed you to set foot inside this workshop. 
Had I but known that the curiosity you displayed as a boy would develop into this all-consuming distraction. Is that all you came to say, Father? I'm well aware of your distaste for... Nay, Stephanivian, there is more. House Zemael has sounded a call to arms, and House Hyenor is bound to answer. As you well know, however, our companies are light on lances. If we are to avoid dishonoring our name, every able soldier, mine own son included, must take up spear and sword and march to battle. I have not the disposition for charging into enemy ranks, father. I did not raise a coward, consider your next words carefully, boy. As your manufacturer chief, I hold the authority to expel anyone from this workshop. On parchment, mayhap. There's only one chief we answer to. Ooh! Ooh! I, I understand that our ranks have grown thin. Thus is our house in dire need of the support my machinists will bring. Challenging the might of dragons with spear and sword is the work of seasoned heroes, warriors possessed of unflagging stamina and robust physique. Equipped with a firearm, however, even the scrawniest commoner could engage those same scaled demons from afar. Think of it, Father. If the masses were trained in the machinist profession, the casualties of fang and claw would be considerably diminished. Yeah, but that's not what he wants. He wants to maintain the nobility's control over the populace, and equipping and arming the populace would do away with that. The knightly system uh, benefits the rich and powerful more than it benefits the common people, and that's they have a vested interest in maintaining that, Stephanivian. Machinist companies would soon form the backbone of our defense, and as the master of the manufactory, the accolades would belong to House Hyenor. Train the masses? Foolish boy. No low-born army could ever replace a contingent of disciplined knights. It is time, my lord. Svara is expected to descend upon our defenses within the hour. Svara? You mean to engage that great brute with naught but our knights? What would you have me do? The dragon flies straight as an arrow for our very own Skyfire locks. Should we let them be destroyed, the price will be steep in both coin and honor. Father, you must allow me to deploy my machinists. Once you have witnessed them in battle, even you will be unable to deny their effectiveness. <sighs> do as you will, Stephanivian. As matters stand, I would not turn away a lame chocobo if it offered to defend our holdings. Be certain to assemble your forces at the locks here Svara arrives within an hour. The dragon's coming within an hour. You better fucking book it. In fact, how are you here? How do you have the time to be here? Oh, dear. I, I, I look kind of uh, nefarious staring down at war from the attic like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just looming. Yeah. Oh, dear. I fear I have allowed my passions to impair my better judgment. Of all my budding machinists, only you have seen true combat. Yeah, but I'm worth at least a dozen knights all by myself. So, send me. Tis to you, then, that I would entrust the use of my prototype device. The Rook, as I have taken to calling it, is an auto-turret, a type of machinist weapon that fights on its own. Do you recall Rostenthal's explanation of the Ethero Transformer? That contraption at your waist will convert your body's ether into the lightning-aspected energy required to power the turret. You need simply to activate the weapon, and it will supplement your own attacks. Svara has plagued House Hyenar for long years. Should you employ the Rook to good effect, then we may rid ourselves of both a deadly enemy and my father's antiquated notions in one fell swoop. Alright, well, that this Machinist quest was just talk to Stephanivian, and then talk to Stephanivian again, quest completed. Uh, yeah, well, because, like, this is one of those... This is one of those situations where the... If you had been doing this at level, there would be two quests at this. You're, what, level 40, 45? 30, uh, uh 40. Yeah, 40. Oh, this, like is, this is a second quest that happens immediately. Okay. 
Exactly. So it like, it wants to give me the uh, yeah. The quest auto number turret. one gives you the ability. Quest number two has you use the ability. Some traits, actions. Uh, Brook auto turret and Brook overdrive uh, or overload. Potency increases as battery gauge exceeds required cost at time of deployment, up to a maximum of 320. Shuts down after execution. If this action is not used manually while the Rook Auto Turret is active, it will be triggered automatically immediately before shutting down. Oh, cool. So it will automatically explode itself. Yeah, um, you, you almost don't need Rook Overdrive on your bar at all. The only time it's useful are, like, in, like are in, like, edge cases where the boss is about to die, and you get a little yes, and therefore the flex. Uh, well, alright then. Otherwise, work overdrive is just kind of pointless. Well, I put it on my hotbar anyway. I'll replace it later. Yeah. Well, Lore, we are as ready as ready can be. All except for our wayward instructor. Would you be so kind as to locate Rostenthal and inform him of the urgency of our situation? I imagine he is loitering in Foundation somewhere, making his unhurried way to the workshop. Alright, where the hell is he? He is... Oh, he's right over here. There he is. Yeah, Midja just stretches an arm from the ceiling down to me and pokes me on the shoulder. Yep. Ah, oh, Lore. <laughs> Look at this scrag I caught me creeping ab I caught me creeping about near the workshop. Up to no bloody good, I reckon, so as I sat him down for a friendly chat. A dragon attack? And the boss needs every hand on deck, does he? I'll be right there, just as soon as I'm done ringing some answers from this ugly sod. You know, where there's one rat, there's always a dozen more. Might be best if you took a quick look round yourself and deal with any troublemakers before you head back. No need to murder anyone, mind. The noise from a goss round ought to scare him off. Goss round is L2X. Cool. Okay, we got three places to go. Uh, first, we're going to the Forgotten Knight. Which night? The Forgotten Knight. Which night? <laughs> <laughs> took me a second. <laughs> I was um, right there, so I was able to, like, pick it up. Where... <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> For the safety of Ishgard citizens, the Sky Steel Manufactory must needs be shut down. Hey, this is just... This is just his butler. Alright, time to be an asshole. How uncouth! But I suppose I should expect not less from one of Rostenthal's underlings. You learned it from the vicious brute himself. Heed my words. The Skysteel Manufactory plays haven to villains. For the safety of Ishgard citizens, the Manufactory must needs be shut down. Oh, we made the situation worse. Their Roganin instructor poses as the former Commodore of the Knights of the Barracuda. This is a lie. In truth, he is a bloodthirsty pirate who murdered his entire crew. Well, uh, I think I made that situation worse. When do we not? A fair point. Hang on. 
Actions and traits. Nope, not orders. General. Uh, okay. Inventory. Where's the, where's the door? Ah, here's the stairwell. Whoops! Wrong way. You beat this guy up? God damn it. You ain't going nowhere. Uh, okay. You ain't seen the last of me. I mean, I could have done worse to you. Me thanks. The name's Celesto, one of your fellow machinists, if you didn't know. I was making preparations for our fight with Svara when that thug ambushed me. Definitely on the orders of Stefan Ivian's dad. Don't bother chasing him. I doubt he knows more than what he was paid to do. But he did make it damn clear that someone out there has a grudge against our workshop. Anyway, I ought to get back to my duties. We ain't never fought in a proper battle, let alone against a monster like Zvara. And we'll need all the advantages we can get. Okay. Etherite shard. Back to the manufactory. What in the seven hells? You could have taken off a toe. You're Rostenthal's new pop, ain't you? If it's trouble you're looking for, then look no further than that backstabbing Lominson cur. Is everything all right? Rostenthal tells me there are villains afoot making trouble for the workshop. Intimidating my machinists, were they? Setting fires and spreading rumors? Joy, too, has overheard vile slander intended to defame our master of marksmanship. Well, he is kind of a pirate, Stephen Ian. You took every care to choose the right employee, my lordship. We could do a lot worse than the former Commodore of Limsa Lominsa's Barracudas. And now half of Ishgard thinks he's lying, and he's a convict of terrible crimes. Does someone seek to harm the manufactory standing with these attacks upon our instructor's character? I am sorry, Rostenthal. Your association with the machinists has brought you naught but ridicule and insult. Ugh, don't blame yourself, boss. After all, more than half that stuff's probably true. Hi, I was the Commodore of the Kudos, right up until I got kicked out of my arse for making a bloody mess of things. That's why you found me at Camp Overlook. I was there to visit one of my old underlings. Of course, he'd rather take another axe to the face before he'd talk to me. My mistakes cost some more than others. There's no bastard in Linosia who's called me friend. Your mysterious rival must have learned to be tarnished past, because they offered a fortune for me to accept the job as your master of marksmanship. 
I suppose they thought the workshop to be ruined once the truth behind me charm and reputation became common knowledge. But as it turns out, I don't take kindly to being some faceless bastard's puppet. So I took their coin, then yours, and made for the hills. I had no intention of fulfilling my contract, not until your venture here went and got me fired up about teaching the truth. That said, there ain't not the agreement that says I gotta fight bleeding dragons. My students will give a better showing without me there growling over their shoulders any road. Though his support will be missed, Rosenthal is mayhap correct in his assumption. Our demonstration will be all the more impressive for his absence. Let us check our weapons one last time and assemble at Skyfire Locks. This place is so loud! <laughs> to Skyfire Locks! Nope. There. Uh, okay. The Camp Dragonhead. Hey, Pixel carrying me. Cool. Wait, I can just fly over this. What am I doing? Why can't I enter G-Pose? What's wrong? Say I without noticing I kept typing G-Pose in Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, solo duty time. Allow me to brief you on our defensive strategy ere the dragon and its minions arrive. Atop each of the three locks, we have placed a dragon-slaying cannon. Our task as machinists shall be to defend the cannons from Svara's lesser kin. Hopefully I only have to do one at a time. You will find a lock in the northeast. Are you saying you can't handle them both? There are three. A lock to the northwest. Okay, well at least they're not on peaks or something like he made me think they would be and a lock to the south i will track the concentrations of our enemy and direct you to the cannon most in need of protection hark the dragons are come everyone to your positions are we going to do this without the knights I hope there are knights in the fray, just for flavor's sake. We commenced. Uh, Southern Cannon. Big Bertha. Fun. Dragoons and Knights here. Foe swarms the cannon to the northeast. Joy lore swiftly now. I'm on my way. Oh, I like that uh, run animate that sprint animation for Machinist. That's good. My uh, my one issue with it is uh, oh northeast, to, not northwest. Whoops. I used to use um, I used to use this this really cool looking pistol that was really short. So whenever I ran ran with that, I had this one hand supporting part of a gun that didn't exist. Which was a shame because 
it may be tiny, but it reminded me of Bayonetta's pistol, so I really like using it. Yeah, there, there are at least a couple pistols that, where the barrel is too short for the run animation to look good, but it is what it is. Yeah. The sacrifices we make for the drip. Somebody just, just said to somebody, there's disgusting creature. Like, okay, Limsa's being Limsa. Oh, Big Bertha West almost died. Oh, Svara time. Fix this mission. Well, that was a little harrowing at the end. Well, in the middle, not at the end. Well, Father, do you see now how we might prevail against dragons without risking the lives of our soldiers? It was a most impressive display. I must admit, your commoners acquitted themselves admirably. I thought I heard the terrible din of cannons being fired. And what do I hasten out here to find but the high-born Hyenars frolicking in the snow with their low-born lackeys? Oh, you look like an asshole. After providing you with this opportunity to improve the ailing reputation of your noble house, does the consideration of House Zemael not merit a formal reply? Lord Tettlegrinch, my apologies. He looks like a Tettlegrinch. The foe was upon us ere we could put Quill to parchment. Ah, uh, yes, I imagine you were full occupied with scraping together a serviceable company of soldiers. If only your dear son was as ardent with his knightly training as he is with his idle tinkering. How the Tettlegrinch still starlight. Oh, he's going to punch him. There is not idle in my work. You would not speak such insults had you seen my machinists in action. Oh, such a temper. It would seem your association with commoners has eroded your manners as well as your martial skills. If you are so confident in these machinists of yours, mayhap you should enter them in the upcoming tourney. Hey, I'll happily kick the shit out of some knobs. Mayhap I shall. Upon my oath, we will turn Ishgard's tradition-bound combat upon its ear. Wow, well, Stefan Ivian is just looming over this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy See's adjudicators will be most impressed when your lowborn rabble is chopped to pieces by the tested blades of noble champions.
My son, what have you done? The tourney is a stage upon which is flaunted the might and metal of the four great houses. Only the finest knights are chosen to participate. Even with the aid of your machinists, our battered ranks stand little chance of victory. Must we now parade our shame before the highest echelons of the Holy See? Hey, enter me. I'll kick some ass for you. Man, okay. you guys really <laughs> need some broken. sleep with your raccoon eyes. Do not be so swift to dismiss our chances, Father. I give you my word. House Hyanar will leave the contest with its pride intact. And furthermore, should we win, I will have your word that you shall yield the running of the manufactory to me. Man, I like Stefan Ivian. He's got balls. He does. Very well, my stubborn boy. And whether you win or no, you be sure to give House Zemael a darn good pummeling. I shall see it done, Father. We will not disappoint you. Oh, Rostenthal, thanks for joining us. You might not have seen me, but I was watching all the same. Them dragons didn't know what hit them. I never thought I'd see the day the Count himself would give us his blessing. Lore, by virtue of your ah. undeniable expertise, my father has at last recognized the value of machinistry. But we cannot stop at but one hard-headed knight. This tourney will be our opportunity to demonstrate to all in sundry the potential of our profession. My lordship, if I may... It seems that Lord Tettlegreach has a dislike for commoners such as me. If me presence will cause you more trouble, then maybe I should quit the manufactory. Pray no, pay no mind to that preen and fop, lass. He's all piss and wind. Hey, listen. My blood's common as dirt, and you saw what I've done to, uh, to Nidhogg and other dragons. I can handle the tourney. Aye, ever has Teetle Grinch sought to needle me in such a manner. Tis not you, my dear, that he despises. Tis the mingling of high-born and low-born. House Zemael is a powerful family, and their talent for the building of fortifications has brought them vast wealth and influence. Staunch allies of House Durandare, the Zemaels have also been party to a number of significant victories. Thus do they stand at the peak of Ishgardian society, looking down their noses at any who do not share their noble pedigree. If you truly wish to please me, then I would have you shine your brightest in the tourney and wipe that arrogant smirk from his face. Shall we be on our way? I like this guy. Stefan Ivian is great. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm considering uh, changing the color of my chocobo. And, really? Yeah. And the, the process of changing your chocobo so... Like, I'm looking at the calculator right now. It would take 88 fruit to get to the color I want. Oof. Ooh. And that's, that's going to take you, like, weeks just to get the process going, right? Oh, no. that It, yeah. it, 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 it takes, like, a minute, but that means... Feeding... Eight, handing 88 pieces of fruit to my chocobo. Oh yeah, just absolutely fast feeding all of them down at once. Yeah. The, the way it works is, to change the color of, your, of a chocobo, you just like feed it fruit of certain colors, and if you feed a bunch of red fruits, it'll get your, uh, it'll give your chocobo more reddish color. Like a flamingo. Bluish, bluish fruits. It'll go bluer, uh, etc. Yeah. I have, um, um, I have a slight theory that, um, Ch chocobo feather color changing is just an auto or, or, or is a is a is an immune system response to stomach aches. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yes, it's, it is in fact exactly like lingo. And like there's an online calculator that you can go to to check to see like well cuz like it also like your starting color matters because you have to like you know go it's like from, a huge, it's yeah, like you're a huge 
Yeah, you're basically like crawling across a color wheel, um, like with the fruits you feed it, and uh. and so like I'm going from like trying to go from like a dark color to a light color, and 88 fruits. That's what you need. And so, what that process would entail if I go individually giving my chocobo 88 items, and then waiting a few days for the color to change. Oh man, so if you screw up, you won't know till later. Yeah. Mm. Although, also, if you screw up, fixing it isn't that big a deal, because odds yeah, are if I screw up, it'll the color will still be close to what I wanted. And then oh I'll yeah, and you can adjust, like, adjust it a little bit, right? And then you can adjust it accordingly after that. Um, but that would be annoying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's only six hours? Oh, yeah, it's like, there, there's like, there's some waiting period, but yeah. It's long enough that you might have... I just saw your Godbert glitch up into the ceiling again. <laughs> I uh, cannot currently do the the samurai job quest that I'm on. It's the uh, it's the one where it's really overtuned and the, the actual enemy is really hard unless you have like maxed out item level for the fight. Mm. Oof. I was popping potions and everything, and I, I just barely lost by one one percent. I was like, I'm not going to do that again. What level of quest is I forgot. Uh, fifty-four. Oh, yeah. The one on the boat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that one. I must confess my misgivings to you, Lord. When queried as to our chances at victory, my magic eight ball returned an unfavorable result. We triumphed over dragons, tis true. But such a battle has not prepared us to face coordinated parties of seasoned knights. My machinists are simply not ready. Tis fortunate, then, that the tourney is yet some days away. Let us keep such disheartening talk from our colleagues, and continue to train them and ourselves for the contest ahead. Okay. So how long are the 45 and 50 quests? Because my brain feels like it's on fire. I think I got a bad dose of my meds and it didn't have enough effect. So if it's not very long, like if it's just uh, a quick quest and then the uh, the level 50 tourney, I'll do it today. Um, but if it's going to take me like another 45 minutes, I'd rather do that next time. Sure. The silence is deafening. Like I said, I'm not sure. <laughs> I went to get a drink. Oh, did you hear my question? I did not know. Oh, so sorry. um, oh, sorry, I just blanked. Um, I don't feel very good. If this is just a quick quest and then the level fifty tourney, I'll do it today. Um, if not, if it's going to take like 45 minutes or an hour, uh, I'll do it next time. What do you think? Uh, I believe this one's pretty quick, yeah. Okay, then I'll do it today. Yeah, yeah the problem with job quest is they're, they're one and done, so it's a little hard to remember them exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, like with the uh, Aurora Reborn quests, the level 45 quests are pretty long because it's always a fetch quest to collect a bunch of gear. Oh, but, yeah. with that, but with uh, the Seven Sword one, it's just like another quest on the road to the level 50 quest. Oh, um, by the way, Law, would you like to do the first, do the first tier of the, the, the normal raids next week? Um. What? <laughs> I just, I was just thinking, like. Well, we've got, first... we've got a bunch of class quests to do in a row. Fair enough. Um, and uh, what what raids are you talking about specifically? The the not the the normal raids for for uh, Heaven's Ward. The eight man raids. Because uh, I was thinking if if we're having like if we're not on one of the twenty nine, it might be a, a nice to have um, a bit of a. Something a bit actiony before we have the break. Maybe I'll think about it. 
Greetings, Lord. Your trading proceeds apace, I trust. Stay a while, and we can discuss our strategy for the turning. It would appear everyone is present, even our dear instructor. So let us delve into the particulars of the upcoming contest. Now, the degree of favor the Holy See bestows is much influenced by the outcome of the tourney, and thus do the nobles enter only their most able champions. That's me! Oh man, I'm gonna have to fight against House, um... Um... Fortome Knights, aren't I? I assume that Tettelgrinch, in his small-minded maliciousness, seeks to humiliate us before the adjudicators, and thereby convince the Holy See to cease the flow of funds to the manufactory. I don't understand, my lordship. Most Discardians ain't hardly aware that machinists exist. Why have we so grabbed Lord Tettelgrinch's attention? That's because he's likely noticed that your firearm can kill a man with naught but your dainty little finger on the trigger. Tis the same reason there's laws in Limsa Lamitsa and what prevent any old drunken horse on from carrying a musket. And Ishgard's hierarchy ain't exactly fair and measured now, is it? If you arm the lowest folk of the ladder with weapons like ours, then you can be sure as the tide that their barrels will soon be pointed towards them overprivileged bastards would stand at the top. I was just talking about that earlier. But as you say, most of the nobles don't seem to understand the threat what an army of machinists could pose. This Tettlegrange bloke is a step ahead, I'll give him that much. Aye, he's a despicable fellow, but also uncommonly clever. Even so, he has failed to arrive at the most obvious conclusion. A well-trained and well-armed populace would strengthen Ishgard's defenses tenfold. And if we are to convince the Holy See of that fact, then we must claim victory at the turning. Oh, this takes place before, um... Everything, yeah. 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 Like this... Like this is a this is a just like with the Dark Knight quest, this is one of those quest lines that you can basically do before you start the main quest. Like you walk in the door of Ishgard, binge this quest, and then continue with the main story. Yeah. Before you do anything uh, to help Ishgard perform at all. Yeah, the the, the stuff taking part during Heaven's Ward is the fifty to sixty stuff. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You got something special in mind, then? I have been considering several strategies, but to practice them here in plain view of our adversaries would void their effectiveness. We must needs look farther afield for a suitable location to train. Bloodshore in eastern Lenotia ought to do the trick. I'll secure us a place where we can shoot to our heart's content. Joy, pray make preparations for the journey, after you have attended to your duties at the manor, of course. As for you, Lord, I would have you test another of my innovations. Remain behind, and I shall make some adjustments to your Ethero Transformer. That there's the level 45 quest. Forgive my duplicity, Lord. The talk of adjustments was merely an excuse so that we might speak alone. Now, you heard me boast to my father that machinist companies could soon form the backbone of our defense. That was something of an exaggeration. When it comes to gigantic dragons, I, one may as well be firing at the side of a barbican. In the tourney, however, the lesser size of our opponents will work against us. It requires intensive training to consistently track and score hits against targets that are both small and agile. And as there is but little time left before the contest, our victory will depend largely upon your skilled contribution. If Joy is able to display even a fraction of your battle savvy, then the reputation of the machinists will flourish. Thus, I need you to attend our practice with undivided focus and provide a shining example to which she might aspire. Alright, and next is the level 50 quest, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this is a quick one. No, this is another level 45. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Still should be a quick one. What's joy? Like... 
Yeah, you're looking at two more solo dude thing, Max. Yeah. Once Joy has completed her tasks at the manor, we can be off to Bloodshore. I wonder what could be keeping her. A trip to the market to restock the larder or some such? Or she got ambushed by Zemael's people. Find Joy in the Pillars. There's joy to be found everywhere. What are you talking about? Uh, the pillars. Wait, hang on. No, okay, I can't just teleport straight there. Red circle, not blue marker. All right, Joy, where'd you go? Unquiet traitor. That's not it. Where'd you go? He's so just like it's been. It's not the Unquiet Traitor, is it? It's blood in the sands. Yeah. Wait, hang on. Oh, I'm... I'm in a red circle. Is the red circle where Joy is? <laughs> no, it's level 50 drinking the pain away. Well, then you're, you're on a completely different quest. <laughs> Do it for Gilly. Uh... Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah, if you check the if you check the map through the, via the quest log, it'll take you to the exact like part of the map that the quest is in. Yeah, I should have done that. <laughs> ah, there she is. Oh, hello, Lore. You must be eager to get in some practice before the big contest. I'll be ready to go just as soon as I've hauled me shopping to the manor. If I'm to continue me machine is training, I can't be shirking the other chores. I made a promise to the Count. But I won't keep you waiting much longer. I'll run to the manor with what I've got and come back for this big sack afterwards. Or I could just carry the big sack with you. Offer to help Joy in secret. Offer to help. Well, that's very kind of you, Lore, but I'm stronger than I look. Maybe you could just keep an eye on this other sack until I get back. Shouldn't take too long. Or we could just go on one trip together. All right, bye. Pick up the heavy sack. I 
It's where the last vigil we go. I think this might be the longest character name I've seen in the game. Count uh, Barandun de Hyenar. <laughs> Lore, what are you doing here? Who's watching the other sack? Ah, lending a hand to young Joy here, are you? Very good. This is the last of her tasks for the day, so she is free to assist Stephanivian in his work. Pray, return to your tourney preparations. Thank you, Lore. I appreciate you helping me, of course, but I appreciate you helping his lordship even more. The Count was against me becoming a machinist. He knew that me dad's too feeble to work, though, and was kind enough to let me keep me placed on the manor's staff. Me family'd be on the streets if it weren't for this job, and I can't thank him enough. Sometimes it don't feel right that I repay him by spending half me time at the manufactory. But maybe now that you're around for Stephanivian, his lordship won't need me to be a machinist no more. Well, it seems like you want to be one. Winning the tourney will repay the Count's kindness. Hmm, I never thought of it that way. Well, we should be getting ourselves to Bloodshore. Alright, to Bloodshore. The Costa del Sol. Here we go. Right. Let's begin, shall we? Our objective shall be to explore the most effective methods of countering our knightly opponents. If a knight cannot reach you, he cannot hurt you. Thus, we shall concentrate on those machinist skills that hinder movement. I have prepared a crate of aromatic meats said to be irresistible to giant crabs. For the purpose of this exercise, imagine the shell-covered creatures lured by its scent to be enemy knights and form tactics to prevent their advance. Should the box be broken open, that will signal your defeat. Let's see what strategies you can devise for us, eh, Lore? Saint to 49. That one E3 roll would just to completely ruined giant enemy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Attack its weak point for massive damage. Yeah, I mean, it's not even that quote. It's the 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 sentence immediately preceding it is what really elevates it to the next level because the guy is talking about the game and he's like. We are very proud of how historically accurate we have made this game. And then just... So here we have this giant enemy crab. <laughs> yep. And we will attack its weak point for massive damage. Just as they did in ye olden days of the Japan. <laughs> very sudden. Very... just an utter shift. Alright, the turret. I don't have enough for the turret. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, you don't want to use the turret immediately as soon as 50. You want to uh, fill the battery more than that. Oh, the box has a substantial health bar. Okay, good. And you do have enough heat to gauge, though. That was that my do. that was my plan. Yeah, the heat, the gauge, you do want to use as soon as you can. Okay, yeah, the, the 
the the turret didn't last long at all. I'm pretty sure it is still time. The the, the reason why it does more damage is it gets more more of its attacks off the longer your time is. Yeah. 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 Encounter? Rustenthal, wait, what is that thing? Must have caught the scent of blood. Reload. Take it down, mates. Thing from the deep. You are not using your Gauss rounds at all. <laughs> Alright. What am I supposed to do to use those specially? Just use them, period, all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're, off, they're off cooldown abilities, so it yeah, costs you nothing to use yeah. them. Yeah, use them between your other attacks. Charge. That last fellow was rather unexpected, but you handled him nonetheless. Well done. Your performance has prompted my prospect, my magic eight ball, and inspired me with entirely new strategies. If I may, my lordship, see how well Laura is coming along. Maybe you don't need me in the tourney no more. Are you saying that because you think you have responsibilities, or because you don't want to be in the tournament? Whatever could make you think that, my dear? I need you now more than ever. The sight of you, a commoner with scant battle experience, sending seasoned knights stumbling and sprawling, will open the eyes of the Holy See. Why, you shall be the bullet that pierces their tradition-bound hearts. Very well, my lordship. I'll do me best in the name of House Hyenor, for both you and the Count. That's the spirit. Now, I must return to the workshop. And back we go. To the menu factory. A fine showing out there, Lord. Joy's lack of enthusiasm troubles me somewhat, but I'm sure the moment her hand closes about her stock, she'll be as ferocious as ever. All right, all right. Rage against the machinists. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The yep. day of. The Love day it. of the tourney is finally upon us. This is it, Lore. This is Machinistry's moment of truth. Pray, gather our colleagues together. Joy should be just outside, performing some last moment firearm inspections. And Rostenthal, well, Joy may have a better idea of his whereabouts than I. Probably getting sloshed. Lord, this is a disaster! Someone has broken into our storage crates and smashed all the firearms! Uh, I, I must tell his lordship. No, we must check the other crates first. Or maybe... Oh, what do we do? Oh, you're right, of course. Giving in to panic won't help us none. I'll see what's become of the rest of the weapons, then report me findings to his lordship. Rostenthal? Last I saw, he was getting some fresh air out behind the workshop. Fresh air, is that what he's calling it now? Rosatol, are you beating somebody up or are you getting drunk? Do 
Don't look now, lassie, but I think we've got visitors again. Stubborn bastards. Huh? Smashed up our firearms, you say? Seems whatever scrag it is as wants us gone is done with being subtle. We'd best run off the rest of these thugs before they decide to set fire to the place. You know what to do. Warning Goss rounds only shows we don't bring the wrath of the Temple Knights down upon us. Meet me back in the workshop when you're done with your patrol. Oh gee, I wonder if this is Squinty-Eyed Loiterer. <laughs> oh please, no, twasn't my idea. Yeah, you better run. Alright, there's three of them. There, there used to be a different move that um, that you were used to scare them. That, that was like specifically like a blank shot or something, um, which makes more sense than um, it being a Gauss round, given a, a Gauss rifle is using ele is effectively a real gun using electromagnetic. Yeah. Like, like a Gauss round is worse than a bullet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it tra you know, travels faster, and also you wouldn't be scaring people with the sound because electromagnetic guns don't make noises like that. <laughs> uh, oh, that purse ain't worth getting shot at. Ah, where'd you come from? Lore, are you quite all right? Our fine instructor here tells me you've both been busy chasing off hired miscreants again. I'm afraid the damage has already been done, my lordship. Even after scraping together our spares, we have less than half the weapons we need for the tourney. And half we'll just have to do. It will be difficult, I know, but I believe we still have a chance. What in the bloody hells was that? Sounds like someone fired a damn cannon or summit. We let, let off a bunch of gunpowder, I think. There's the rest of the guns. Oh, the Lordship, our turrets. Blast, we must have missed one of the shite eating bastards. That's it, then. We'll have to forfeit the contest. No, you've still got me, and I can kick ass for the lot of you. Nay, my dear, there is yet time to remedy this. These efforts to confound our chances serve but to, spoke the fire, to stoke the fires of my determination. Pray, accompany me back inside, Lore. Rostenthal, Joy... Lead your fellow machinists to the tourney field and don your masks of supreme confidence. While our mysterious enemy is distracted by your show of bravado, I shall work to replace the damaged firearms. But how can you craft so many weapons before the contest begins? The short of it is, I cannot. Not to my usual exacting specifications, of course. Only the four of us must be aware of the poor quality of our replacements. You and Joy must needs fight that much harder to compensate for your colleague's lack of firepower. Well, don't make ones that'll explode in their hands, at least. I'll do my best to keep the others in high spirits, too, Lord Stephanivian. My, my apologies. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop or nothing, but when I heard the noise... Ah, oh, Celesto. Well, there's not for it now. Welcome to the conspiracy. I'm a little distrustful of this guy. Formidable foes, meager chance of success. This shall be a victory worthy of song. All right.
right back in we go. Would that the odds were not so heavily stacked against us, but we cannot let a few setbacks stand in the way of our moment of glory. Hey, level 51 machinist. Okay, let me note that down. And save. Okay. I'm not good at note taking notes. Ricochet! Pretty good wrestler. Deals damage to all nearby enemies with a potency of 130 for the first enemy and 50% less for all remaining enemies. So that's hey, that's a uh, that's a 30 second cooldown that is a panic button for when you're being swarmed, no, right? That's a, no, that's an no, off cooldown not. ability that you, every time it's available, just like Gauss round. Gotcha. Yeah, it is, it, it is literally AOE Gauss round. Yeah. Um, uh. This this, ga this game really just does not have panic buttons. Like, you, you if you've got an ability, it is there to be used. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, yeah, and even, also uh, just like Goss Round, it uh, gets buffed up by Heat Blast. So, like, uh, with so now it's like Heat Blast, Goss Round, and uh, Ricochet, um, all in as much as little time as possible. Gotcha. You just, uh, you just spam. You just spam it and Goss Round every time it's available because it's free damage. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, like, e even the Invul Invulns, despite having, like, a seven-minute cooldown for a Paladin, um, they're, they are... We, we, we plan when to use them, and they get used in, in our Savage fights. Mm -hmm. like, they're, not, they're, ne ne they're never just a, pa a panic button. <laughs> we actually have a really creative use for it uh, um, that's not in any, any guides for this recent fight. Anyway, um, yeah, we, you've told this story before. <laughs> uh, have I? I think so. <laughs> I, I don't think I have about about using cover. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, you've told us several stories about creative uses of cover and stuff, but anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Savage fights are fun, <laughs> but we're not there yet. <laughs> we are definitely not there yet. No. We have done all that can be done. It is time we join our companions and survey the field on which the tourney is to take place. You are familiar with Camp Dragonhead, I trust? Its grounds should make for an interesting arena. To Dragonhead! And Chad says the only real panic button is Benediction, and I, yeah, pretty much. I don't really agree with and that like, one. And, uh... like, and like, even then, like, but yeah, yeah, like, even then, like, that's kind of a given. Like, Ideally, you go into the fight with enough of a plan that there is nothing that gets that nothing actually surprises you, and you just like you you know when to use your quote unquote panic buttons. Yeah, I mean, like the I remember that if you if you save a use, you lose a use. Yeah. If, um, the the more you use something, the more you can use it. Gotcha. Yeah. Like, if, yeah, you, yeah. Like ideally, you want ever all of your buttons on cooldown all the time. That is the maximum way to efficiently <laughs> use them. Yeah, it, apply, it applies just as well to Final Fantasy 16 as well. Yeah. Noted. Yeah, like there, there is like some skill in like timing the use, but in general, like using them is always better than not using them. Good, good, you've come. The other houses have yet to field their forces, meaning we've time to inspect the arena and formulate a winning strategy. Are you certain of your preparations, my son? These tales I hear of hired thugs terrorizing machinists and destroying equipment do not fill me with confidence. Pray remember that the collected gaze of Ishgard shall be focused on this contest. A poor showing will cost us our funding from the Holy See and cast an uncertain shadow over the future of the manufactory. Only the gears, though. None of the, none of the straights are coming. <laughs> I have never been more ready, Father. Now relinquish your doubts, find yourself a nice vantage point, and enjoy the spectacle. I'm off to find a perch myself, but here's one piece of advice before I go. Make the most of the terrain. 
There's a few choice spots where I'd lay an ambush, or expect me enemies to lay one for me. Just be sure you've given the place a good once-over, eh? You heard the instructor. Give the word, and we shall endeavor to learn the lay of the land. All right. Final part of the uh, level 50 quest, I guess. Yep. Let's, let's review our strategy, shall we? Unless you would rather simply begin the turning, in which case you may speak with our machinist messenger. The power of attorney! Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, damn it. God damn it, Koji. <laughs> <laughs> Ours will be a combined force from House Hyenar and House Fortome, while our opponents will be of House Zemael and House Zeradair. Okay, so I don't have to fight the uh, Fortome people. The max standard is respect our encampment. Inspect the standard in the surrounding area. We allow the standard to be destroyed. We are defeated, and the tourney is lost. The standard also releases waves of curative magic. So return here if you are in need of healing. Man, can, can you believe that uh, recently, like a, a six point four story quest had a, had a pun name, and loads of people were posting like, "I can't believe they made a pun like this in the game." So that where have you been? What, have you played the game up till now? Did you buy a boost? And this was after a double pun in literally the quest beforehand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we gotta destroy the Crimson Standard, I take it. The game of Capture the Flag. Victory is ours. The enemy standard will heal nearby allies. Best to avoid lengthy engagements in its proximity. Let's now discuss our individual roles. Joy will lead a squad of high NR combatants in an offensive push. The remaining machinists and I will join the four tome in the defense of our encampment. Eulor shall be our flying company and strike where needed. Celesto, you shall be our ambusher. Let us survey your place of concealment. What is Danny doing? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm washing my hands. Dude, is there a sink next to your computer? What? <laughs> He's on a headset. Okay. <laughs> Although the sink is in the room with my computer. Kitchen and living room combined. <laughs> Celesto will emerge and assault the enemy standard on Lore's signal. The Durandair captain is an aggressive sword. If our defenses appear weak, he will commit his forces to an attack, and I will leave their encampment vulnerable to ambush. We have placed a signal mortar near the Etherite. Come with me, and you can see it for yourself. Celesto might turn traitor. The border should be safe here from enemy detection. The spot also affords you a fine view of both camps. When you judge a time to press the attack, simply operate the mortar to send up a flare. Let us return now to our encampment. I'll stall the efficient until you give the word. Oh, just jumped off the edge, huh? All right. Not just a me trick, then. Okay, so what is my actual role here? I'm the flying company darting in and out fighting people in the middle? And I give a signal when it's time to move on the Crimson Banner? 
Okay. Seems to be the idea. Hark! Tis Tettle Grinch and his knights. Ah, the manufactory workers in all their glory. I imagine there are many who are curious, even eager, to witness you fight this day. Unfortunately for the spectators, however, how Zemael will end this mockery of a contest all too swiftly. Bluster all you will. We shall let the tattered remains of your standard speak for us. <laughs> Such conviction from the king of the commoners. Come then, all the players are present. Let the tourney begin. Ankles and Heidel are made of sterner stuff than ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be nice? I've got glass ankles thanks to my mom. Her genetics. Oh, hey, 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 you, you get back here. Left on the D pad, not. Damn it. Fucking ow. Heal me. Heal me, please. Yeah, you got second wind. Alright. Banner's getting damaged. Uh, all right. You're using overcharge, and then you're using less like once, which kind of removes the entire point of using overcharge. I'm just, uh, I'm trying to weave in Goss Round and uh, Heat Blast and stuff. Um, all in a row, and I haven't got the hang of it yet. That's what's going on. I'm supposed to be making an advance, aren't I? Yes, you are. I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I, I didn't want to backseat you, but yes, you do need to attack at some point. Right. Also, your turret is sitting at a false battery. Right, I forgot to use that. Is now time for the signal border? It's j yeah, they're distracted by their push.
All right, we've got this. Toss up my turret before it's done. There we go. Nice. Screw leveling Dragoon. I want to level uh, Machinist. Yeah. Get more of Stefan Ivian. Yeah. Here's another example of a good, um, a good and just Asgardian. Yeah. Congratulations, Machinist. You have proven yourselves not entirely without merit. House Zemael will gladly welcome your inclusion in House Hyenar's next company of reinforcements. Ah, uh, your novel toys confounded my knights and won you this game of flags. I would see, however, how you fare against adversaries who seek not to break your standard, but to spill your life's blood. We beat you with barely any training. May the day soon come when we fight side by side. And hastily, hastily made replacement weapons as well. <laughs> Mayhap then you shall understand why the knight is the master of the battlefield. <laughs> we probably shouldn't tell him we're a dark knight <laughs> well done my son you have triumphed against all that would see you fail I don't want to tell anybody I'm a dark knight I'm embarrassed to be a dark knight <laughs> <laughs> But of course, Father, there is no difficulty that the machinistry cannot overcome. Hey, Dark Knight is a good class. <laughs> I misheard that as Dark Knight, and uh, that is my new headcanon. I did say Dark Knight. I was quoting Alquia in chat. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, yep, I see. <laughs> Attorney victory. How many years has it been? At last do we begin to reclaim the influence we have lost. And there shall be more to come, as long as you are true to your word. That means no more bemoaning my knightly skills, no more disruptive visits to the workshop. Well, he'd be less disruptive now that he's on board with you, Stefan Vian. Man, this guy really needs to get some sleep. <laughs> Stefan Ivian, I hereby relinquish to you full authority of the manufactory. May your machinists be the spears that pierce our foes and the shields that defend our walls. Well, not much shielding going on with the machinist, uh, Baron Dune. Best defense is a good offense. Dead monsters deal no damage. Yep. Do as you will, my son. For the glory of Ishgard and her people. The age of the machinist has begun, my friends. Follow me, and together we shall ring the rusted helmets of the old guard. Not very joyful, huh, Joy? J-O-Y-E-F-U-L. <laughs> uh, back to the manufactory. Called 
was a hard-won battle, Lore, but your keen grasp of tactics carried the day. And that is to say naught of your ever-growing skill with a firearm. With this victory, I have become Manufactory Chief in both name and deed, and I intend to make the most of my newfound freedom. Indeed, my first act upon returning to the workshop was to improve upon the Ethero Transformer. This latest model is yours, with my thanks. The tourney exposed certain inadequacies in the design, for which I have endeavored to compensate. Use it well, Lord. Uh, armor Coffer and Ricochet, and I think that Armor Coffer is behind what I've got, but I'll open it and see. Yeah, the, this armor, you, you're, you're in uh, Poetics, Peter, so this armor is not going to be an upgrade, but I think it looks cool. Milena is, saying, Milena is saying she doesn't like the Machinist outfits. I actually do. But she, I, I, I like the uh, aesthetic for the Machinist gear. Alright, well, let's open it. Oh, it's green. Stuff of aiming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, it's not an artifact gear or anything. It's just, it's just catch up gear. Mm hmm. Just oh, in case hey, I do just... like that. I, I do like that jacket. It's my colors, for starters. Yeah. But yeah, this is the just-in-case-you-didn't-have-any for this. The the uh, bare legs are a little weird in Ishgard. Yeah. Boots are nice. I'm pretty sure it's just a recolor of the gear that you can get from Sestasha, uh, which mm -hmm. is... It's the same, but in red. Oh, yeah. All right, well, that's where we're going to stop for today. Uh, that took a little longer than I expected. I should have expected that to take less time than this. Uh, so I guess we'll do Dark Knight next time. Great. Uh, okay. I'll level... Well, I, would, I, would, I would not mind doing some raids next week, because it's been a while since we had some big group stuff. Yeah. True. It'd be nice to get everybody together to join us. True. Uh, I'll make an announcement in stream announcements uh, about it that people should prep for next Saturday for raids. Okay. Um, That's a good, good story, too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I will be relying on you guys to direct me to which raids we're doing, though. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just the one. I mean, there is one raid. <laughs> like, yeah, there, there there is a normal raid and an alliance raid, and we're taking it to the normal raid. Yeah. Oh, you think that'll take up a whole four-hour stream? That will take uh, several. It'll take at least two four-hour streams. Yeah, th th there's plenty of stars. Oh, wait, you're talking oh, about oh, the oh, equivalent oh. of the coils. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. You Just, keep saying raid, and I was like, the, the eight-man trial stuff? Yeah, we call them raids because they're called raids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you... I... Um, yeah, okay, I've got it now. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's going to be it for today. I'll read my schedule and get off. Before I do, I would like to plug my Patreon. I make my living off of Patreon. It's my sole source of income. And I make uh, enough to pay my rent and my bills. But I don't make much beyond that. Uh, certainly not enough to put anything in savings. And I'd like to have an emergency fund for medical emergencies or if I need to replace stuff. You know, the works. So if you could go to my Patreon, which you can find either in the description of the YouTube video or with the exclamation point Patreon command in Twitch chat, go there and pledge a dollar a month or a dollar per stream or anything in between. Pledge a whole bunch per stream if you really want to change my life. Um, and I'm grateful. I'm endlessly grateful to the people who pledge because you're the ones who make it so I can do this strange, silly job for a living. I love my job. I'd rather do this than anything else. I'd rather be here making content for you guys uh, than anything else I could be doing with my time. Um, so yeah, I'm endlessly grateful. As for the schedule, uh, let me pull that up. Uh, tomorrow is going to be Wild Arms 3 for a patron uh, at 1 p.m. EST. Monday will be a bird story for a patron at 1 p.m. EST, but that's a short game. 
we're saving Finding Paradise for the day after. Um, so I'll stream a bird story, which is probably an hour long, and then I'll stream something else, maybe, uh, maybe Street Fighter VI, maybe something else, maybe uh, Final Fantasy III, we'll see. Um, Tuesday will be Finding Paradise and 1 p.m. EST for a patron. Wednesday will be Pokemon Rejuvenation for a patron. Thursday and Friday, I don't have anything set on the schedule, so that'll be filled by a floating game. And next Saturday is, of course, our weekly Final Fantasy XIV stream. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.